am. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm beautiful. Okay, no good. Matter, no matter what they say. In what Keanu, are they it's breathtaking. It's it's true. Words can't bring your audio down. <laughs> Is everyone recording? Uh, yes. 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 <laughs> you do ten seconds and fifteen seconds. Okay. okay. Right. I've learned <clears throat> that the second clap is the best time to 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 just sneak a fart in. I, no one, no one you know, this. I knew you were gonna. That's you did not. I knew that's what you were gonna say. I was confident that that was what you, was what you were about to say. Maybe it's not as subtle as I thought it was. Then, no, I've never <laughs> noticed that. It's just it's on brand. As you, yeah, it's yeah. it's just very extre it's extremely on brand. My brain, my brain very quickly went to the perfect time to do some kind of audio related <laughs> thing. No, it's to fart. <laughs> uh, Joel, we tend to not take a break like y'all do. So if you need to like go to the bathroom or something, just like mute yourself. Don't stop your recording. Just like we can oh. edit that out. Okay. All right. Um. Uh, yeah. Just that's step fine. Away. So uh, I don't think. Uh, that'll be a problem the only problem is i've got children and 8 a.m is uh, fraught with danger about uh, mm -hmm. silly stuff like that so mm -hmm. if i walk away it's probably that if you have to okay. mute and walk away it's not a big deal we all, okay. we all yeah we, we get it good deal yep yeah. um, very and, informal uh, if it happens during your segment we'll probably do you first since you're the guest but if it happens if you have to get up in your segment we can always come back to you so don't worry yep. okay mm -hmm. sure thing did we want a time limit towards um Stuff we're talking about versus the the Xbox thingy, just because I know it's a big um, topic. Yeah, uh, I, I have I very don't... little to say about my game because I'm early on. So yeah, I'm there's so not much to do. I said, have to say about my game. I'm so early. glad that you said it's because you're early on and not because <laughs> you're like it's I have so very little to say about my game because it's trash. <laughs> That, that would cause a fight. I have lots to say about Necro <laughs> Barista, but would, we, can, we can keep it short. I would never fight with Erica over anything, even my favorite video game. <laughs> <laughs> You're a coward. All right. Okay. Let's, let's light this. Let's clap this candle. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to episode 131 of the Gaming Fix podcast on July 25th, 2020. I'm your host, Andre Cole, a.k.a. your partner's favorite Yankee Candle. I am joined today by Alex. I always had the one that smelled like pine trees. That's a good smell. I like pine trees. Uh, Pat. You want like a nice vanilla cinnamon, like make it smell like, like baked goods, but like baked goods you want to eat, but that if you actually ate them, they would be like way too sweet. That's, that's, like my, a Cinnabon. that's my Yankee Candle. Yeah, kind of, but not like a Cinnabon, because uh, oh. that's that's both smells too sweet and is too sweet to eat. The the thing so, that just, it just like it disappoints your roommates when they smell it and they go, <gasps> and then they're yes. like, it's just a candle. It, yes, yes. The experience okay. should be a way to troll people in addition to a nice smell for that. That's for you, Allison. My favorite uh, of the scents. Uh, is not because they smell good, but because uh, they are very abstract. Uh, I love those abstract candle smells, the ones that are like catching rays. I'm looking on the Yankee Candle website now. <laughs> and you're just like, what does this mean? It smells what like this? sunscreen. I, yeah, I guess. But like, why do you want that? And there's just always some smell, like some a sense that you're just like, I don't know what this is supposed to smell like. And there's something kind of nice about that. Great. Erica. Um, what kind of candles do I like? I prefer like a fruitier smell, like a pina colada or a lime or orange. Got to be good. careful with those pina colada candles because the rain keeps putting them out. <laughs> and uh, joining us, a special guest this week from Super GG Radio, we we've got the hat trick. We've got all the hosts this time joining us. Joel, you've completed the Triforce. Thanks for having me, guys. I uh, oh man, you you picked the perfect intro because my wife is a. I, I'm pretty sure she's gonna keep Yankee Candle afloat during the depression here. <laughs> um, 
have you guys ever remembered uh, like four or five years back there was a promotional campaign they did for man candles yeah Mm-hmm. Oh God. So they had like yeah, they had like scented bacon, uh, yeah. no. grass oh. clippings. Because men uh, only like oh. candles that are about like man things. We're Dude not allowed stuff. to like smells. We're not allowed meat to like work. other smells. That's, that's yes. the only thing in yard work. Like meat in yard work. That's, that's the only thing that defines us, right? <laughs> Food in yard work is all that we do. So it's all that we can smell. I mean, it's the only thing we can smell. It's like so, just thermal, like, the like CPU thermal paste. Is there? Is there just cold? No, that's for nerds. I, I think that's I think somebody in our generation needs to find their way into Yankee Candle before they start doing that new yeah. game smell and uh, <laughs> you know stuff like that. But uh, new game uh, smell. Oh no. <laughs> this one smells like a switch cartridge taste. Oh, oh no. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, but let, let's say if we're going for abstract things like Allison likes, let's say you get a new piece of electronic. And you're pulling that that plastic off. Let's get the smell of oh. that. Can we get yeah. the smell of uh, reading the game manual in the backseat of your car while your parents drive you home? <laughs> Hell yeah. From the Blockbuster video. I, see, I always rode my bike to our game shop. So <laughs> <laughs> I want a candle that, that smells like Mountain Dew tastes. Now there's a gamer candle. You just, you just want a, a candle that smells like Jeff Keeley. What if you What if you did a candle that was like two it was like split in the middle or horizontally is even better and one smell is doritos and one smell is mountain dew I th- yeah. see i think the gaming world's updated upgraded it has to be a monster energy drink now Maybe. No, but you need it like to, i think you need to have the mountain dew and doritos so that you could have it in the uh um display case where they like at target where they have mountain dew they have doritos and they have it's- like and it's a got new... double XP for Call of Duty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought when you said case, when you said case, in my mind, the idea was that you put the candle in your computer case and then light it. And I was like, oh, no, God. that's interesting. I, no, I, that's I, like a, <laughs> you're going to ruin your computer, man. That's as bad as okay. the shaving the CPU. That candle oh, scent is God. just going to be called early onset diabetes. I, I think that's <laughs> but, but where we're headed. You, if you truly want to appeal to the most Call of Duty of dude bros, it needs to be one of those three wick candles, and it's just Mountain Dew, Doritos, and weed. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine smells? The smell? I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't buy not. a weed scented <laughs> candle because you could. I would just where I live. You can just buy weed. So, <laughs> but maybe I would just you do just that. like the smell. As someone who does like high. the smell of weed, I would just purchase some weed. I would <laughs> some, so- as someone who sits in a legal state. I can smell that every day on my walk. <laughs> yeah, it's like I I don't like the smell, but like Same. you know I don't care that my neighbors are are smoking. But if it, if if I if I found out they were just lighting a candle, I'd be like, what's the point? I'd be so Especially mad. Because <laughs> in, not to not to dunk on uh, illegal states at all, um, but uh, the weed that you can get there is usually not as good as the weed that you can get here. So it does not smell as good. <laughs> There's some pretty good smelling weed here. Or you can just adopt a skunk. That's the thing. It shouldn't smell like that. It does (laughs) in a lot of places. It often does. Yeah, so that always messed with me growing up because in in Illinois, it just got legalized last year. But I distinctly remember smelling that smell growing up. And my parents would be like, oh, that's just a skunk. And now my brain is just like, every time I smell something that's clearly something smoking weed, it's just like, I have this internal crisis just like is there a skunk nearby or is just somebody getting high right now <laughs> oh it's just concert venue smell for me yes. yeah <laughs> oh I have my, many my, funny stories. oh my god i had a, like a math class in community college and oh. there was a tool concert in my town Hell yeah. and uh <laughs> like the day after there was this mom who was in the class it was an economics class and she was like talking to someone about going to the tool concert with her like 11 year old son and she's like there was weed smoke everywhere and we had to leave i'm like how are you, to how a are tool you in a concert in eugene oregon how are you <laughs> you're a big enough tool fan that you go to a tool concert and then you get there and you go weed we're leaving <laughs> yeah like i what you, you want to hear I, about I, a missed opportunity know. so illinois legalized but didn't make it uh saleable uh, un- or effective until the end of last year. Uh, mm-hmm. Guess who's who was the main act of Illinois State Fair last year? 
Afro man. Snoop Dogg. Okay. <laughs> Not far <laughs> off. <laughs> Pretty good. Anyway, yeah, he doesn't really care. Grandpa yet? It's legal. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's not at all. Remember when he smoked a joint at E3? Do you remember when he smoked a joint with Spyro the Dragon? What? Oh, yeah. That was I mean, recent. Technically, he didn't. They didn't actually show that happening, but I assume it did. Too he, he definitely <laughs> lit got... a joint with the fly with the Spyro drone. <laughs> yes. Oh, right. Oh, oh, I that thought was you, great. You were, that you were was... talking about Weed 3, right? Before, before the um, EA press yeah. conference? Uh, yeah, it was a after he was playing like ba Battlefield and like yeah. Zac, Zac Efron and was it? Uh, oh God, who who? Zac uh, Efron also was Khalifa a lot of was there. Uh, <laughs> who was Jamie Fox? That was who it was. It was Zac Efron and Jamie Fox? Yeah, like we got to right. go find Snoop Dogg, <laughs> and they looked super high. Anyways, yeah, Yankee Candle's pretty great. <laughs> You know what else is pretty Do we great? know that? I don't know if that's true. You guys have be. sponsorships with them or something? <laughs> no. Okay. We certainly won't. Yankee Candle, now. sponsor us. I say I wish, but I'm like, I don't really even like their candles very much, so. Damn, now we're oh. certainly not going to get sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love them. They're my favorite. Uh, sponsor us, please. Yep. And now, <laughs> Allison's going to type this up is... an article on the site that says why Yankee Candles suck. <laughs> oh, God. it would be okay. fine. I'm fine with that. That would be the weirdest uh, thing to pop up on our website where it's like game reviews, new episode of the podcast, and then suddenly I'm like, here's my op-ed about Yankee Candles and why I hate niche. them. And I'm like, and yep. I don't even hate them, but. Well, you know what? It doesn't suck, usually. <laughs> video games. I would argue video uh, games that's suck debatable. most of the time. <laughs> most of the time. Damn. I might, I might playing, clarify and say them. gamers suck. <laughs> yeah, video but games. Playing the them doesn't who play suck. Them. Hopefully, uh, and that's um, us. We all suck. Everybody. Good night. <laughs> uh, but with two C's. starting off, someone who definitely doesn't suck, Joel. How about you uh, tell us about? We we talked about Super Liminal last time, so if you want to. We can follow up on that discussion here. And then yeah, we don't have to go too that. far into it here. And both of mine are probably to be pretty short here. But uh, super liminal is, I mean, the, the cheap and easy answer is it, it reminds me a lot of Portal in, in that there are these a lot of really inventive puzzles. It's a it's a first person, not shooter. You're going through these different regions and solving puzzles. But the main conceit is that there are items you can pick up in the backdrop. And then you lift them up in the air and drop them, and suddenly they're huge and stale. And then if you pick them up and then go down, they shrink. And then there's just a lot of logic puzzles in uh, sequence. And then there's these sort of like snippets of dialogue that go through their kind of breadcrumbing a little bit of a story or a lesson that's trying to be told. Uh, you, you know, it is something that I watched uh, Getty play through our extra life last year. And, it, you know, I was sort of like punch drunk from the lack of sleep, but I was just like, this is kind of interesting. And I had the opportunity to play it on switch and I had a great time with it. It's just a, it's a really, really neat thing. And the pu puzzles for the most part are pretty clever and, and well thought out and very logical in that, you know, uh, there's a very intentional, solution to each problem uh and then it just builds on each other throughout the entire game uh if you're paying attention to it in a nice way uh the only real critiques i have about it are that uh the parts of the game where it is going through like hallways or rooms it, it feels like they're trying to make it look like normal rooms and stuff and Comparing it to something like uh, Portal, where Portal, there were the test chambers, everything had a clean, stark look with clearly drawn lines. And so, like, even if you play Portal right now, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't feel dated in the way it looks because of that clean, sharp look. And Super Liminal has a little bit of that, like, older first person shooter look because of the fact that they tried to uh, have like uh, furniture in the background and paintings and stuff. And so it makes it look a little more dated totally. in some spots. Totally, totally. Uh, the other part was that the, the later parts of the game, the puzzles did get a little too abstract for me. Sometimes uh, that might've been more of a challenge on my part, but uh, 
for example, there's this one room and I, I hate to spoil too much of this because part of the fun of this game really is just solving the puzzle and having the nice surprise of, you know, wow, I didn't know I could do that. Uh, but one of the later rooms, you're walking through a, a big room with, I think, I think it's white walls around the sides and then a hallway connecting it. And if you go through the hallway and walk around, you're just walking in a loop each time you realize you're just repeating the same thing over and over. Uh, uh, spoilers for anybody who doesn't want to hear super liminal spoilers, but uh, the, the solution to the problem was walking through that white wall and it would open up a new space for you to go through. Yeah. And it was just one of those things just like, well, how the hell was I supposed to figure that out? <laughs> uh, have you but, played antechamber? I have not. No. Yeah, you, you should play that. antechamber if you're yeah. liking super liminal because they okay. seem similar. Antechamber and antechamber does, is mind bending. It does this this things like that puzzle you're describing, except that they make sense. Like what happens yeah. is you walk around in a circle for like 20 minutes and go, "What the hell am I supposed to do?" And then when the solution presents itself, instead of going, "How would I have figured that out?" You go, "Oh, of course, that makes sense." Mm -hmm. um, awesome. And it's super cool. Yeah, the, the oh, game sorry. that I played right... Oh, I'm sorry, Alex. <laughs> um, the game that I played uh, right before I played Superliminal last week was Antichamber, actually. So I think <laughs> I was like in that mindset um, when yeah. I got in there. It, you would like it if you liked the puzzles in Superliminal. Um, my issue with Superliminal was the story, that I didn't like that at all. <laughs> but it's so Antichamber is definitely a lot less story and a lot more puzzle. Yeah, yeah for, for super liminal story, like it's it's kind of threadbare, right? It, it's really yeah. more about just trying to share the message of like see things from a different point of view, and you, you know, it, it's it's really just meant to enforce the kind of logical thinking you're supposed to have uh, throughout the entire game in order to cross each barrier or each puzzle. And, and I did personally, I kind of appreciated it at the end because it felt like, especially at least the, at the conclusion, it kind of ended on like an up note a little bit, but it did feel like sometimes like you, you got the lesson after you figured out the puzzle instead yeah, of before you got to the puzzle. So that would be my, my little gripe yeah. about that. Like you're taking the test before you're getting the lesson for sure. I got yes. a bit of that too. Um, another game you might like is Manifold Garden. It's kind of similar in that kind of abstract puzzle like wait what am i doing oh god wow okay cool kind of way yeah and yeah also, i think sorry. i think alex played that our alex not yeah. uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. and remember, he liked you, it a lot too but yeah, you guys I remember i remember you guys talking about it too um and pat i have a reference for you specifically that i don't think anyone else on this podcast is going to get but every oh time joel talked about white walls all i could yep. think was the yep. breakdown mm -hmm. from between the buried and me <laughs> oh sure yeah I thought you're right. You I don't reference. get that reference. <laughs> I thought you were going to reference uh, the, Mac the Macklemore song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, no, that's not what I was going for. Screaming, I was going, I want to be free. I want to just live as you run headfirst into that wall. <laughs> no, I was thinking of the metalcore song. The Between the Barry and the Bee song <laughs> is significantly better than the Macklemore song. So no, that's a cool boy Q verse is pretty hot. That that uh the heist uh, was a was a pretty good album at the it was, time. It was a good album. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, you know what else cool. is? Yeah, you know what else is pretty cool? A lonely mountains downhill. Yeah, it is. Yeah, have have this any of you played great. this? Okay, yes. so yes, yes. Yeah, I think Andre and I played it. Keep meaning to play it. Jeff Green was talking. Yeah, about I keep recently. meaning to try it too. Yeah. So. uh Part of how I stretch myself too thin is that I somehow <laughs> fooled some people at the website Nintendo World Report to uh, let me write for them, and uh, I was able to get it through them. So uh, thank you to them for that. Uh, um, is it on Switch and, and now? It is on Switch, yes. Oh, cool. And so I, uh, you know, I, somebody was reviewing it there, and they were describing it, and I was like, it kind of sounds like Trials, and I like Trials you know uh but then he was describing it as, it's more chill you're out in nature and it's it's not really a race it's just more about just trying to get through the track you know you know what it is like yeah, it's like track exactly. mania that's that's what we said track last mania. year too i was like this is like track okay. mania but slower speed and less insane. now we're talking uh now we're talking i think so 
So, so for anybody who hasn't heard about this before, like uh, Lonely Mountains Downhill is basically a series of tracks where you are on a bicycle. Uh, it is a 3D space, sort of more from a top downish kind of camera oh, point of view. Isometric. Almost isometric, yeah. yeah, yeah, and everything's like slightly. I don't want to use the word voxel because it's not really that, but it's very polygonal, you know, it, it, undetailed. But it's it's all very, in like very low fidelity. Yes, but like, del- yes, like in a, deliberately so. Right, and it and it suits it very well because really the focus should be trying to go down these different dirt paths and roads and crossings on the bike, and it'll start out with a track where you your goal is just to make it to the end of this mountain downhill track and there'll be different checkpoints along the way from start to finish and then after that it'll open up things like time trials for that track as well as challenges like you know don't get knocked off your bike more than this many times uh because if you run into an obstacle or something you you eat shit and then like a little pixelated blood pops up (laughs) it's 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 almost kind of cutesy and funny in the way that it uh, projects that too and it also has that kind of nice like instant restart thing going on where the second you eat shit you hit a you're right back to the last checkpoint you keep going and it has all these sounds in nature like birds chirping rivers flowing in the background and uh for anybody like me who needs something a little more serene and calming uh take things at your own pace right now uh because i i know that i've i've had challenges with the real world right now uh and really gaming is my way to kind of break away from that at the moment uh i would encourage anybody to try it It, it's a really serene relaxing experience yeah it's a really good game you you had me at trials but chill (laughs) it's it's kind of like if you mixed trials and a short hike together Oh God, that sounds amazing. Yeah. So now I need to check out a short hike to then. Yeah. Short hike is also as very you, good. Yeah. I gotta play it's, that. It's as you good. get as you get into like the later tracks and like the different like the other mountains and the different things, you're just hurtling down these mountains <laughs> at like breakneck speeds mm-hmm. and flying off and just like ragdolling down. And you're like, oh vip start back up at the top or you know start back at the checkpoint and it's like no pressure because like you just do it at your own pace like until you're like okay i really want to get this like time down totally. it's just which, like really relaxing which is very much where the track mania part comes in right it's like you're just kind yeah. of going through you're not caring about time you're not caring about if you make it you just want to see the track through and then then you can make it you can get good at it if you want but like otherwise it's just yep. yeah it's enjoyable i i also really like lonely mountain downhill um yeah i didn't know it was on switch so something i liked with the PC version is that it actually had like leaderboards. So you could see how your friends were doing and stuff like that. Uh, does that exist on switch? I couldn't tell you. I'm sorry. Okay. Leaderboards are usually like one of the last things I personally check. Okay. No, so. that's no problem. Yeah. Cause I remember it surfaced it pretty easily be like, Oh, Andre yeah. got like this time. Wow. Cool. Yeah. My, my competitive nature uh, comes out in smash brothers more than anything lately <laughs> and rocket league. So, uh, I, you know, if, if I looked at leaderboards and I'm being pointed by a store, it just makes me feel bad usually. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> gotta play uh gotta play Descenders. Oh, Descenders that is, is a cool. similar yeah. Descenders rules. That is a cool game. Okay. Less chill than Lonely. It is not <laughs> chill. <laughs> it's, it's very not chill, but it is a similar concept in a lot of ways. And All right. maybe maybe every everyone should play Track Mania. <laughs> Uh, yes. like every week we talk about this every week i'm like oh i should go play it and then mm, i haven't so but mm, i will mm. try this week i will look into what if, track mania what if you could turn your car into paper mario in <laughs> track mania so in paper, paper mario, mario do you get a skin. car it's a like shaped like a boot it's very good so, you could make it, a so paper so mario so go shoe. wait isn't isn't the first scene in the new paper mario like mario and luigi going up in a mario kart cart yeah yeah, there we go. Oh. That that the track right. media. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh next let's let's talk about another game we've talked about in the podcast before, going to Erica and uh her discussing I believe our number two game of the year for twenty nineteen. Number two, yep. Number two. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm playing Outer Wilds. Um I tried to play it last year too. Um but this was like maybe at the height of the, like the worst yeah. my hands have ever been. <laughs> um, it is 
it is not the most forgiving game when it comes to like movement. Yeah, uh, for sure. So well, in fact, yeah. I would say it's deliberately difficult sometimes. But yeah, you know, yeah. One thing, and sorry, we should let Erica talk. But yes, it, it, <laughs> it, at least at least it's not super hyper timing based with everything. Yeah, with everything. <laughs> Yeah, I'm finding it much easier this time around, especially because I've been using some of the autopilot, which is not like it's it it just kind of like lines you up a little bit. It doesn't really land you or anything like that. But um, I did autopilot myself straight into the sun um, <laughs> this oh, yeah. morning. So uh, it, it, it you have to still pay attention if you're doing that. Um, but it, it has been nice to just kind of like give my hands a small break now. And now that I'm not so like, Oh, if you're not, play, if you're not dry, you know, flying to each planet, then you're not really playing the game. Like I was last year <laughs> um, having like the breaks in between where I can just like, you know, stretch my hands out a little bit. And also having the loop in general, just kind of gives me like a good stopping point. Like it's like, okay, I'll just play till the end of the loop and you know and then i can take a break um so it's been easier this time and it's mostly that i really want to play this game and that's why like i've been forcing myself through it anyway um but this time around it's much easier because i'm going into it with a more chill mindset um cool. and i'm having a better time with it i'm still pretty early i think um I've done a few cool things. I, it's like, it's hard to tell you where I'm at because you could do things in whatever of order. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. yeah. So totally. yeah, I think I'm still early on. I don't know a, a lot about what's going on at this it, point. Um, it's like, a, it's about a 15 to 20 hour thing, depending on how long different puzzles take you. So yeah, so I chunky. mean, yeah. I restarted now. So I'd say maybe I'm about three to five hours in yeah. on yeah. it now and i would say you as you specifically as a huge mist fan i think like some of the puzzles you're going to really adore that's uh, kind that's of what why i'm expecting to <laughs> that's why i wanted you to play it so bad <laughs> <laughs> like everything i've heard about this game i'm just like oh god i have to play this game i have to play this game <laughs> and like and uh xavier my husband also played the game when it came out last year and immediately like ran over to me he's like you need to play this game you have to play it you have to play it <laughs> And so I think that's why I was getting so frustrated was because I can't, pl I couldn't play it. <laughs> like, I was getting really upset because my thumbs kept locking up on me, but now, you know, a little autopilot, a couple breaks and I'm getting through it, <laughs> that's awesome. but I'm having a lot of fun uh, with it so far. What has been your favorite planet or thing you've come across? Um, I just did. I mean, I don't know if there's the only thing to do there, but I just uh, did that bramble world yep. oh, thing trust me. Um, there's it's not the only thing to do there i'm sure it's not <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure it's not but i i i uh found what i'm supposed to find there the first time i guess um mm -hmm. and that was really exciting um just because there's you know clues to it on your home planet and i just mm -hmm. enjoyed that part um a lot uh there was like another one where you have to like wait until you orbit near the sun for ice to melt in order to get uh, to like a different part and i yeah, thought yeah, that yeah. was pretty clever and exciting yeah. also um, that one was cool yeah yeah but you know we'll see we'll see i'm sure there's more there's more to come all right shocking no one that i have still so not good. played a game in 2020 that for me comes close to <laughs> <laughs> outer wilds <laughs> Uh, I played it. I, I would agree. Like uh, I played it, it wasn't somewhat my recently. Game that year, but it's it's an incredible game. I played it somewhat recently and uh, still had an emotional breakdown when the end times music played. Um, so that's fun. I had the soundtrack on driving to work, and then almost started sobbing when that song played. <laughs> when I was just <laughs> driving to work in the car. <laughs> I love that music Damn. can do that to you. Just how powerful it can be in evoking those thoughts and memories like that. And like I'm that's pretty, what makes it great. I'm pretty vocal about that game being my favorite ever. So uh, it definitely, the music in it definitely uh, hits me pretty hard all the time. One of the coolest things, like non-game related experiences I've had, maybe ever, is my partner and I went to the Olympic Mountains and the Olympic Peninsula last year, last summer. 
and just like drove through the mountains and listened to the Outer Wild soundtrack. And it was mm. just like a religious experience. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> But Eric is totally right that like you, you need to approach outer wilds with a patient and relaxed mindset. And uh, from an understanding of wanting to learn about how it works, because that was my problem when I first started is that I wanted it to be the game that I expected it to be, which I expected to have more control over flying. I expected it to be having more agency with and that aspect and and you're flying this rust bucket mess of a <laughs> aircraft vehicle and it's, it's like, literally like made of plywood right and <laughs> so it's like it totally makes sense that it flies like crap but you, you know it's just you're i'm so used to having games where you know usually the kind of stuff i liked is where i feel like i'm able to move most fluidly so like my one of my favorite games of that year, the year that it came out was spider-man because everything felt so great and fluid and fast but you have to just sort of give up control and, and let yourself be in an understanding and learning phase of things yeah definitely and i think i'm in a better mindset to do that now because i think last year I, I talked a little bit about it uh on the podcast last week but last year I spent the majority of the time having like a crisis about the fact that I can't interact with games the same way after having some thumb and neck injuries that make it so my hands don't work the same way anymore. Um, and it's been nice to find a piece with it and also figure out how to play games now, what I have to do now. And, um, and I, I'm finding outer wilds like a little bit cathartic for me because i quit it <laughs> i like rage quit sure. <laughs> outer wilds previously and now i'm finding it very chill and very fun my biggest criticism of that game that hopefully won't be like um frustrating and and like triggering or upsetting at all is there are a couple parts where i think from an accessibility standpoint they could do a better job allowing you giving you assists because there are they're like most of that game, I won't spoil anything, but most of that game is sort of what you say where you can play it at sort of a slower pace, even though some of the controls are challenging. And then there's a couple of moments where suddenly it's like, actually, you need to be good at this for like 30 seconds. Mm. And that is, you know, can be really fun if you've been spending all this time sort of with the mechanics being chill and then going like, oh, okay, I'm glad I got good at this. But it also can be very frustrating, I think, if you aren't expecting it. So while I would not spoil what that those instances are for you, I would say if those become a frustration, by all means, thanks between Xavier and people here, hopefully we can like come together to provide tips because <laughs> that's <laughs> that I would hate for like that to like ruin it for you. I yeah, can think I of one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, there, I can think of one very specific instance, but like you said, like, part of this game is discovery so i don't want to spoil yeah, it. yeah 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 like i figure worst case scenario i can kind of tag xavier in and yeah. uh, make him do it for and me it's like <laughs> one there's a couple of really hyper specific parts that'll be very clear that like oh okay um and so you know you can try it until you're mad and then <laughs> uh worst case send if xavier's like no i won't help you that wouldn't happen but send one of us you're safe <laughs> and then <laughs> I'm grooming my mustache. <laughs> You're laughing, but that's exactly what he's doing. So, <laughs> how, how much facial hair product does he have right now? Uh, not a lot. He has a beard oil and a mustache wax <laughs> at this yeah, point. But also, I've turned him on to flaxseed gel for his hair too. Was he's just taking care of all the hair on his head now <laughs> in a new way. <laughs> during quarantine okay. Some, someone someone turned me on to korean beauty products Ooh, and me so too. Now, now i have <laughs> now i have some aloe vera face wash from harico harico and it's great I can that's great it. <laughs> all right <Well, laughs> out wilds everyone speaking uh, speaking of things we can recommend can we recommend paper mario the origami king allison i would definitely say yes um it's it's definitely not without its flaws but i think that it's uh you know it's it's still a really really great game and the more that i play it the more i get attached to it uh i don't want to spoil things for people um as well but uh 
one of like I, there is genuinely one of the characters that I've been talking about in our personal chat for a while. Uh, Bobby the Bob Bomb, who is like he's up there as like one of the best Paper Mario characters, period. Awesome. Um, and I'd say also the main uh, person that um, the main uh, origami character that hangs out with you, Olivia, I'd say she's up there as well. Um, but there have been just so many like really fun little set pieces and little uh and just specific instances that have just been re really good and i feel like the game is is still um opening up uh unfolding as it were to me oh, <laughs> um a, that was very good thank you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's, 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 uh, I, I, yeah, I, and I think that, um, really just my biggest issue is, is, as I don't know if, if it's necessarily balanced completely well in terms of, uh, the, um, advantages of getting into combat, but I think that the combat th itself, like, it's, it's increasingly getting interesting and the boss fights are increasingly really, really pretty fun too to navigate and deal with. So, um, yeah, no, I definitely recommend it. I you it's actually, also, yeah. You I'll talked me out of buying it last week. Oh, no. Um, but now you're talking me back into it. So I don't know so now. <laughs> what I have heard, um, is that the weirdness of the writing and story, I don't know any spoilers, but the weirdness of the writing and story is pretty intense it's, in a yeah. kind of cool way and that is yes. the thing that i find intriguing about it there have I've, been several times where i'm just like what we're, we're i i just am <laughs> like i i'm like speechless because it it's just so weird and delightful and yet like funny and then also moving like i legitimately and, cried because of like plot things like I don't think I could say about other Paper Mario games, so it's very weird. I have heard that some of it is not just weird and delightful, but also weird and kind of fucked up too. Oh, one hundred percent. Which oh. is part of it that is interesting to oh. me. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but there is one. I just got um, just finished one of the areas, and it was like straight up body horror. It was. Yes. <laughs> It was bizarre. I think I heard the thing you're what? talking about. Yeah. It was like, it was just, it was genuinely really disturbing and like weird, but like, it, but it was like intense. It, it, I mean, obviously intended to be disturbing, but it was very weird to see this. And I'm like, this is strange. And I don't know how I feel, but I, mm -hmm. I, I think I like it, but it's like, but it, there was some weird straight up uh, body horror in there. And that doesn't bother me so much as like I've never played any other Paper Mario games. Like, do you, is this a good spot to get in? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, I'd say probably. And I wonder if um, I'd actually be really, really curious to hear somebody who hasn't played any of the series uh, play this because I think a lot of the things that people are frustrated with are because they've. Uh, loved paper mario games in the past or that they've loved um the original on nintendo 64 or a uh, thousand year door right. and there's a, just there's a lot of baggage with the paper mario franchise uh <laughs> just because people love it so much um yeah. and, and and also the fact that the last few haven't been particularly good. right so there's just a lot of people a lot of like you know I mean, this had this game had a lot to live up to um so it's but I would say that it would actually be really interesting to be a, a place to start and see kind of how that felt. Um, but also, I'd say, uh, yeah, and I think I think you could you would probably actually like it, Erica, because um, the combat like is one of the things that people are the most um, back and forth on, and I, I personally like it. But it really makes combat into a puzzle, which is like which I could see you liking. Yeah, that I've sounds heard it's right up my alley. <laughs> kind of more of a puzzle game than an RPG in a lot of ways. Not as a knock, mm. like it has RPG stuff in it, but... <clears throat> yeah. No, I would totally agree. Um, it's definitely more of a like a puzzle game, but also kind of an adventure game. Yeah, yeah. Um, than an RPG. 
like it really it, it's like the rpg elements are light which is the type of thing which is the thing that's a uh, controversial for a lot of people but but it seems like I, if you know that and you can't be disappointed by that because right, you know and, what you're getting into like it doesn't sound like that bad or anything like it doesn't sound like a bad puzzle game by any means. no it's it's good and i think that the um puzzles get can get really interesting especially the um like i said the boss battles um and i'm not going to spoil what it is but there are about t- usually two boss battles per section of the game and they're all really unique in how you mm-hmm. have to approach them um in in interesting ways and and then also even just like individual battles are are unique as well um like for example um uh so one of the things uh so basically um for people who might not necessarily know what the battles look like for most battles you're you're as um you're mario in the center of these rings that you have to move around to uh kind of get people into uh ideal um, positions to uh, either get them into a row so that you can jump on them or get them into a square of four so that you can uh, use the hammer. Um, And they start getting kind of interesting with just the basic enemies. So like in this area that I just finished, um, there are quite a few boos, which uh, they uh, like disappear pretty early on from the stage but you still have to remember where they are so that you can move them around so it, it kind of it kind of adds a little bit and a little area of um yeah uh, of, of like some interest but then also i just got a um uh an item that i maybe was able to get earlier but i'm not quite sure where it would help you solve the puzzles if you really just didn't like doing them. So it kind of comes up with these little ways that you can get help for them, which I think is, is nice. Um, but, but again, I think they're really fun. So I've been enjoying those a lot. Um, Talk me back into it this week. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And I, and I don't think I necessarily agree necessarily with um, uh, it needing to be this, just complete rpg experience like i i i am a defender of super paper mario for the wii um which is much more kind of platformer based um Mm -hmm. than any of the other paper mario games but the the real thing that makes it stand out is the story and the characters which i think origami king is is doing well so it's it's been it's been fun to play this one do you have any sense for how far into the game you are? Like, do you have any yeah, idea of what the scale I, of the thing is? I'm guessing I'm about halfway through. Um, so one of the, th- the things that you're trying to do is that very, very, very early on in the game, um, Peach's castle is uh, abducted, like the entire castle, which is a thing that happens in Paper Mario. <laughs> um, but it's surrounded by these uh, ribbons, so you have to go to these different areas to um, basically unravel the ribbons. Uh, there's five of the ribbons, um, and I've got I just finished the third one. Uh, so I'm guessing that there's going to be a section after I've finished all the ribbons. So um, yeah, oh so I'm guessing I'm about halfway through. But if like it shouldn't be surrounded by ribbons, it should be like folded up like origami, right? Yeah, yeah. these are like origami adjacent. <laughs> There's a lot. Of, well, the mm. thing that's kind of interesting about the origami is just uh, as as how much detail it looks like they went into making the origami something that actually could make sense as like real origami. I, I'm yeah. not sure how many of these things are are actually something you could make, but um, the, uh, one of the things that this game has is a lot of unlockables. So they, they have like a, a museum where um, you can unlock a lot of like concept art and you can unlock a lot of um, uh, just uh, design images. And there's a lot of stuff in there that's about like, here's how we folded up this box or here's how we folded up this chair. And so it, it, it makes me really want like, 
I'm really bad at origami, you guys, but I want a paper, I want an origami king book and to like be able to make a little they should do that. Olivia. Yeah. I'm really bad at origami, but I would like Oh, but I would love that. What what if that was the next Nintendo Labo set? And it like actually it actually did something. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Don't make me want it. They should make Paper Mario Labo. Does Look, it seem like I, all the stuff in the game is would be like feasible with actual paper and like to make it origami? Um, some of it is really, really, really intense. So I don't know how you'd make it. But some there are, wild stuff. With there are origami. some wild things. Like there are some like specific uh creatures that are just like complete that you're just like i don't know how you'd make it but i think like i think they really put a lot of thought into you know into how this how the world and in general but but the origami especially would work so i don't know how some of those big ones would be but i'd love to see it i feel like i would be i would be terrible at making some of these things but i'd love to see some like genuinely good people at origami build i bet you won't have to wait long or at all i'm sure that that has happened i bet what's arby's up to god god i don't want to hear about they're busy they're busy putting little swords into um french fries (laughs) You know, I, uh, I've got a bad association with origami after I did heavy rain. And, uh, you know, <laughs> after David Cage hurt me once, I'm not sure if I can be hurt again. So I thought you were going to no. say you had a bad association with Arby's. <laughs> uh, no, actually, I, I'm the one person in my group of friends that actually lights Arby's a lot. So <laughs> Arby's is fine, I'll, I'll, I'll go to an Arby's. I can, but, but... Arby's is like the one fast food place that I, the only thing I can eat on the menu is the curly fries because I don't eat meat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that it, they're like, I don't have any opinion on Arby's either way because i will never be able to eat there (laughs) they do have some bomb curly fries they're fine (laughs) (laughs) Um, for fast food fries i i I, I, we we can't we uh, can't (laughs) but (laughs) welcome to fry fix oh no not again break down (laughs) all the i I mean i i wish i could (laughs) i wish i could uh, morally support uh the the waffle fries from uh, chick-fil-a but uh yeah i've got a little bit of a a personal problem with that yeah yeah but but back to um heavy rain one thing they did that would have been really cool with with this i'm no, sorry no, no, hear me, no it's fine hear, hear me out God. like it, this isn't this isn't a hot take this is a real take um one thing they did with uh heavy rain is they gave you one piece of origami paper and yep. then like when when it was installing it was like here while you're waiting, this is how you can fold this origami, like the crane that shows up in the game. It'd be really cool if in, like this game, the physical edition came with like a piece of origami paper. And it's like, hey, you can fold this thing. So now you have it on your desk while you're playing or something. We, we don't they have to litigate. Ring fit adventure, but it's origami. Origami fit adventure. We don't have so, to litigate or heavy rain, but that so, is the one subversive cool thing that I liked that they did. <laughs> so I, I am game. I am more forgiving than most of that game because uh, it came out at the right time for me to sure. enjoy it and overlook its flaws. Yes, but yeah. yes, the origami train while the loading screen was happening was the highlight. Of and it. then later on you go... Oh no! It's 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 yeah. That was that was uh, a little on the nose. You who were the also, monster all along, but also clever. It was, it was good up until it's... the point where it made no sense. <laughs> Anyways, yep. I like Paper every David Cage good. game. Yeah, I might. Uh, more. Yeah, that's I'm Paper I'm Mario does sound good. I I in, I intend to play it soon. Maybe this week. I'm gonna do some Twitch streaming. Maybe I'll stream that. Maybe I'll stream. I don't know. I'm going to stream something. I have no idea what I'm going to stream. I got a lot of games now. Yeah. Pretty sweet LED light. Yeah. That's, I am full YouTube now, YouTube, Twitch, uh, got RGB LED, uh, floodlights behind me. So, uh, you find me on Twitter and you'll find me on Twitch. So I'm sorry, Allison. We'll get, I, I we'll had to, to go uh, feed my kids while you were talking about that. Uh, thumbs up or thumbs down on thumbs up, definitely. Okay, okay. So Christmas present for the kids then. All right. Except for the body there horror part. Whatever. It's not no, the that kids bad. need it's, to learn sometime. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's body. It's body. It's body horror that kids can see. 
<laughs> yeah, when are today's kids gonna watch like Hellraiser? They're not putting out any new ones, so it's like, what? Exactly. Are, when's their and chance? They're gonna, and they're gonna, if you try to give them like actual Hellraiser, they're gonna go, okay, boomer, whatever, and look well, at this like <laughs> this old movie. You, you just need to wait until Paw Patrol does the Hellraiser arc. Oh God. Oh, God. <sighs> On that note. <laughs> well hey speaking of hellraiser and things that are dead uh necrobarista yeah hell yeah the hellraiser of video games so mm, it's a lot better than hellraiser <laughs> we we need to talk about necrobarista we can i don't know that this is the forum to talk at length about necrobarista no but... and also like i think we are probably going to have to organize some form of spoiler cast for this game um mm -hmm. that's a separate discussion but uh pat you and i both have been playing it i have finished it i don't know if you have no i'm at the end of act one okay. uh so i'm planning to finish it probably today uh yeah yeah so um i'm gonna start talking about necrobarista with a little tiny bit of a history lesson uh oh, like no. very not not a big one not a big one <laughs> like it's it's in a game, the beginning <laughs> It's a game that we've been talking about this pod, like on this podcast for at least two years. Like, um, and I think even before we started the cast, I personally remember seeing the first trailer back in like early 2017 and thinking, wow, this looks extremely cool. And like the style is something I'm really into. And I'll definitely play this when it comes out, which was supposed to be October of that year of 2017, <laughs> but it got delayed. Um, then in 2018, I think Pat, you played it at PAX, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, and I saw it. I didn't get to play it, but I saw okay. it. Packs. But like we, it, it came up on the cast then, and then it had no release date. And then eventually they announced a release date in 2019. So we definitely talked about it a few times on the cast throughout that year. Uh, yeah, I played a little bit at Bit Summit, but it was all Japanese, and my Japanese ain't that good. So I just got like a tone piece, basically. Yeah, and then like somewhere in late 2019 it just kind of fell off the face of the earth yeah like they they were basically like oh the release date went from june 2019 to summer 2019 to winter 2019 <laughs> to the point where it just said 2019 and then 2020 came around and it was just nowhere to be seen so yeah i was like uh is this game dead uh but in December of that year, they put up a post on Steam basically saying, hey, we know it's been a while and we've missed a lot of the deadlines we set for ourselves, but hey, we're going to be open about why it's because of burnout. Like they were yeah. pretty open about saying how stressful the game industry is and how difficult making a game is and stuff like that and how they as a team basically had to choose between overworking themselves and the game not coming out. And they picked for the game to not come out um, like multiple times. So that's why it got delayed three years. And they just didn't want to put it out until they felt like ready and healthy. Yep. So, which I, I respected at the time. I was like, okay, yeah, that makes total sense. I was looking forward to the game for two years at that point. I was like, okay, yeah, no, good. Take, take well, the time for the mental health. And because of the kind of game that it is, it would have felt to me almost disingenuous for them to crunch and crunch and crunch and crunch totally. and then put it out and say like, here are our beliefs. And also we worked ourselves to death. I mean, in some cases yeah. you have to, right? Like as a studio, I'm not condemning any studio that does that, any indie studio that does that. Cause in some cases it's like, we, if we don't do this, the game doesn't come out. But in this case, the fact that they were able to, take the extra time i think is was the right decision for sure because um, yeah. i think it, it speaks to the values in the game too yeah and but yeah but then kind of out of nowhere about a month or two ago they're basically like yeah it's coming out and it's coming out very soon <laughs> like they basically gave it like less than a month of announcement time just being like yeah we're putting it out now and i was like hell yeah and yeah so now it's out it's uh part of apple arcade or you can get it on steam and like I was on saying, sale a, right now, 15% off. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I would say <laughs> like, up front, I highly, even if you, if you have the ability to play it on Steam, I highly, highly, highly recommend playing it on Steam. Um, there is some, uh, they had to make some changes to the dialogue for it to be part of Apple Arcade. Mm. I don't, I haven't read 
for sure that this is what it is, but I am almost positive. Uh, there's a lot of the, the, like adult, the strong language or whatever is not in the Apple arcade release. And my assumption is that as part of, you can, you can have like strong language in apps on iPad, but, or on the app store. But I think probably as part of being app in Apple arcade, they probably have to make it all ages appropriate or something. Yeah. Um, and the, the, it is, it, it's not bad. Like they did their best, but definitely I would play it in the, it's intended text and it also yeah. runs like crap on iPads. So, uh. <laughs> but yeah, like, I would agree. Cause there's definitely some dialogue that happens in the game where I can't imagine how it would be if it was censored because you need mm -hmm. like they're ca carrying very heavy weight by doing like an all caps fuck in a very appropriate scene. Like yeah. you need that. Like if that was all caps frick, I would be like, I can't take that seriously. <laughs> um, but like in that Fudge. moment, yeah, it's like, it's, it's like genuine. Like this character is extremely like at their limit. Like, and I can't imagine how that would come across as being genuine with censorship. But anyways, mm. so yeah, game is out. Personally, I was really worried that after all those times and all those delays, it wouldn't be very good or even, you know, yeah, just very good at all. Cause like there's lots of games I can think of that had massive delays and then came out the other side pretty bad like most of them honestly like things that get delayed a lot usually don't end up fantastic um but talk about fable <laughs> I, I was thinking duke nukem forever i was thinking uh last guardian which was okay like you know it's like they're hyped up for all this time and you're like uh yeah but i mean hyped up for this game is maybe not the word i would use because it's it's a small game but anyways yeah, Necrobracer came out and it is now a shining example to point to as a success story for a game mm -hmm. that like got really delayed and came out. Totally. And like uh, it's so goddamn fucking good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which it's... isn't to say it's without fault. Like there are definitely no. some critiques, but they're so minor that they don't even affect the overall experience in like a negative way in my opinion. It, I think like if you are someone who to likes um the one the parallel that i keep drawing is if you're someone who liked disco elysium this game is not i mean it's a very it's different tonally for sure and it's it's yeah. written from a very different perspective and it's about different things but um the quality of writing there is the only other game that i can think of in recent memory that has that quality of writing that is also about writing like i obviously adore the writing in outer wilds but it's a game that doesn't just lean on that as its primary um, delivery mechanism. Whereas, uh, you know, Disco Elysium and Necro Bruce are both games about writing. They have to have that. And they're yeah. the two of the best written games I've ever played. And um, I would say that that's, I, I mean, I'm only halfway through Necro Barista, but I am just like constantly stunned. Like almost every line, every time I click the button to advance the dialogue, I stop and read it again and go like, holy shit, this is good. Um, yeah, it's I, remarkable. I have an inordinate, inordinate amount of screenshots of just dialogue from this game, which is not something I do too often, but I think it, it is warranted of it. So, but I guess now is a good time to say, what is this game? <laughs> I mean, it's a visual novel, right? Yeah, it, like, yeah. Like it's a visual novel. Like I know that's a big shock for me to bring a visual novel to this podcast. Like whoever, I don't know, what have I ever done that? But, um, it's again kind of like if found which we talked about like a month or two ago it's not a standard visual novel like there's no right. ui there's no text box at the bottom and visuals happening over top the text you're reading is just built into the world and it feels really dynamic like it's like sometimes it'll animate along with the scene to really just make the whole thing feel cohesive and like if it's really zoomed in on a character's face, like the text will like come in at you and like kind of be shaking depending on what's happening, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it, it's really good. Um, the story, I'm going to come back to that. The music though. The music, the music is, is really good. Amazing. I, I was, the, sorry, go for it. One of my few critiques of it is um, there's uh, long, like some, there's these side stories you can kind of unlock where that are, that don't have, animation or visuals to go along with them they're just like you read them um almost like a journal entry or something or a note but some of them are very long which is fine because they're good sometimes the music playing on loop i was like i wish there was another song here <laughs> but totally with that fair. said yeah. the music is really good all of it is fantastic yeah like 
I kept playing and thinking, man, I need to pick up the soundtrack. And yeah, something, for sure. something, something about it also felt really familiar. I was like, why, why, why does it feel like I've heard this music before? And then I looked it up and it turns out the music is composed by Kevin Pankin. So mm -hmm. if, if you remember our game of the year, 2018, our best music winner was Florence and that's, that's him. <laughs> yeah. Like he also did the music for anime, like made in abyss, which had an amazing soundtrack and shield hero and tower of God, which are also really, really fantastic. So like he's one of the best composers going these days. So yeah. Um, the art direction is just like stunning. Yeah. I would say like the way they set up and compose their shots is just so amazing. Like, and it's so impressive because that's one of the few like minor things is like some of the technical aspects of the visuals are, um, like there's, there's kind of cracks in the facade at times. Um, yeah, like, yeah, like I can remember a scene where like someone's sitting down and like his shirt clips through a chair or like, oh. like there, there'll be like a cup on the counter and it's obviously floating above everything like that kind of stuff. Yeah, but... or, or like, you know, oh, they put the animation is the character pushes a button to pour a coffee and then nothing comes out and it's just like, it's kind of, it's just sits, it, there's no like liquid or anything. And, but it's made up for by the fact that the art direction is so strong and like the design uh is so strong and the aesthetic is so strong that it, it's like you don't even really think about that unless yeah. you really stop and look for it like yeah they do they do amazing things with lighting which is really interesting mm -hmm. like and the, also the characters faces are just extremely expressive yep. in this really really amazing way like and like it's it's all 3d rendered um so you're able to move the camera around a little bit during all these scenes. So like, it's not like you're just looking at static images that are pre-rendered. You're actually kind, yeah. of, kind of able to interact with it and like have it, the camera drift this way to see what's happening here that way, et cetera, which is really cool. And also Pat, I think you might agree or maybe you won't, but it had like the best late title card. Cause it was really it, cool. It was awesome. It's like 90 minutes to an hour or two hours in. And yeah, it was just so good. But uh, we don't have to go on for too much longer, but I just really want to say the story is really yeah. special. Like, and it's strong for a lot of different reasons. Like, the characters are so amazingly well written. There's um, there's this character Ashley, and every line she has is like way better than the last, and they're all incredible. Like, she's yep. one of my favorite characters I've seen in many years. Like. A combination of really extremely smart but also hilarious like there's there's a moment where i won't spoil like any there's one line of dialogue that like had me the whole scene had me like rolling laughing but there's a moment where she explains um how she's like trying to like be she's a child like she's like, she's like 13 12. or 14 or something like yeah yeah um and but she's explaining to a character who she just met that they need to complete this thing this little like project that she's doing because she's like icarus and she needs to fly higher and then she goes yeah Kishan, i'm reading a story about icarus and it's like <laughs> you can just like hear even though there's no voice dialogue you can just like hear <laughs> The, the saying snark. it and it's yeah. so funny and he's like you might want to finish that story <laughs> uh, yeah it's so it's it's so good um and i'm someone who like almost aggressive that's a, not fair i i would i would never i'm not the kind of person who's at all like you know, visual novels aren't games but visual novels are a genre that i have never experienced a single thing in it that i've really liked um, and I've tried with like a lot of different ones and I always bounce off of them really, really hard. Even when I can tell that like, oh, this is a quality thing, but it just isn't connecting with me at all. And this one is like totally the opposite. Uh, it is, yeah. it is just spectacular. Um, like how I was, much of that has sorry. to do with your love of coffee and that this game takes <laughs> very place little in cafe. coffee is actually not as, uh, as well, it isn't, it isn't, but it's, it's not as despite being in the title, it is not a game about coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly it is clever that, that they f use coffee in the ways that they do, but, but it has, it has less to do with the game than you would think from the title. So it is not... my two years as a shitty barista are not going to help. No. Me in this so game. That's the thing to note is it is not like, like Valhalla, for example, is a game that has yeah. like, 
you're making coffee or making drinks, not coffee, drinks for people. Um, and then like that coffee talk game that came out earlier this year is a game where you're like making coffee for people. That is not something in this. You don't have it doesn't have mechanics like that. It is a yeah. straight up. You the read the dialogue. Yeah. yeah when and you're like, in the episodes. The reason it's in a cafe at all like, and there are baristas is basically what the story is on a very high level is that it's taking place in this cafe in the plane between life and death. So basically people who have died have 24 hours to continue and exist in the world before they have to move on to whatever comes next. And this cafe is just kind of a spot for them to, you know, have their life. And not exclusively for them. Like there's also, yeah, there's also you can humans. go there. It's also a physical cafe that exists in the world. Yeah. So like humans go there too. Um, but, but yeah, it's, and it's, it's one of the things that's so cool about it is that they make it clear. And, and I think as I get through it, I may come away with slightly more, either way more positive or slightly more negative than where I'm at right now opinions. But the, the world is really feels very richly developed outside of the cafe and it feels like there's an internal logic to it that makes sense it's hard to know right now if that's true or if they just made it appear that way um and so i'll be interested to see where it kind of falls on that spectrum um as i get through the rest of it but um it's it's very it's a really really fascinating and weird world again kind of and this is one of the things that i think reminds me of disco elysium too is even though it's not again not similar tonally um it's it you know similar way to disco elysium how it's very clear that that um uh ravishal is a place in a world in disco elysium that's what this feels like it feels like it's a place rooted in a world and it's there's stuff happening outside um, or stuff that has happened outside. One of the things that's weird about the game is time is super, super, super. And I don't know yet, but where it goes, but you'll time know. is like very strange. You'll, uh, know. you'll know. Um, um, but it's, yeah, it's great. It, and also this fantastical world that it's taking place in is Melbourne, Australia. Yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It's very, it's a very Australian game. Like there, there's a lot of people going like, Hey mate and stuff like that. It's great. Um, yeah. But hey, like, mate, what do you know? they do say that i'm not joking um so (laughs) while it's charming and funny and but the thing is like it's also a really moving story um pat you're you're about to get to some stuff (laughs) like once i once i realized what the story was actually about i was fully invested like yes there's all these comedy moments that i was like also with pat like just totally laughing but they end up really thoroughly exploring the theme of death and the unknown yeah. in a really affecting way. Like I, they, they approach death with a light heart at first, which is kind of weird to think about. But then as it develops these characters, like they're really, they're all really strong characters. Um, like every one of them, even the quote unquote antagonist ends up being one of my favorite characters. <laughs> I love him, but like it takes these characters that you've had fun and funny times with, and then put puts them into like a really intense situation with real weight and real consequences. Like that's, probably my favorite anime trope and they do that and like i'm the kind of person who's pretty stoic when playing games like even if a story is well written or moving like my reaction is generally more like a oh huh, that's cool rather than like fist pumping and stuff or like like even if it's an emotional scene i'm i'm more the type to get misty eyed than to go full-on bawling but like the story in this game totally left me in tears. Like it is yeah. really strong and the writing is just so incredible that it holds it all together. So yeah. like I, I, I really want to do a spoiler cast about this game. Yeah. And I'm sure I'll be in for that. It's, it's a, it's a really, really, even in the first half, the first act, it has some really moving elements of people. I mean, it's not a spoiler because to say like the basic premise, you can kind of get grasp how there's, elements of like a character of a character saying like, look, I have to accept the fact that I have 24 hours left and then I don't know where I'm going next. And that is terrifying. And the way that they sell that as, and make that character really make you understand where that character is coming from is really moving for sure. And it's what's, it's so impressive that it goes from, a genuinely hysterical 
scene to something that is almost like not really action, but like, you know, more in the like, Oh, what's going to happen sort of suspense sequence. And then to this really moving emotional bit, it's, it's, it's really impressive. Just really. And I think you should play it even if you're not someone who would typically play visual novels um, yeah. because it's, it, it, it really is remarkable in terms of like the, the writing achievements. And there's cool stuff that is like gamic around it, even though it doesn't have narrative choice the way that a lot of visual novels do. There aren't different routes to my understanding. Um, no. But there are interstitial sequences where you're walking around the cafe in first person and there's a kind of clever um, unlock mechanic for um, these little side stories that you can read. And the side stories are written as well as the main plot um yeah, so really it, it still has um gamey elements to it if you really need some kind of interactivity as a way to um get engaged it has that too so yeah anyways i know i said we wouldn't talk about it for much and ended up going on it for 20 minutes but that that game is fucking me up because I we'll be talking about was, it a lot more this year, yes, for sure. Um, <laughs> I, I was kind of juggling my top two games of the year. Now this kind of has come in as a third and is potentially bulldozing its way to the top in a way I was not expecting. So how yeah. much how much dubstep share is there? There is some pretty heavy electronic with some wub in it, like like electronic music, but there's no share. Sorry, it's gonna it's, uh, gonna have to uh, really do something special then if it yeah, wants to I get anywhere heard, near that I, list. I, I, I heard some dubstep Nickelback. Um, yeah, I did too. It was photographed. Triumph on official classic. Yeah. Um, and for what it's worth, there might be both both references to Star Wars and Metallica in Necrobarista. Okay, I haven't That's seen the specific references, but I believe it. Yeah. Well, I had my doubts until you mentioned that, but now, now I'm in. I'm sold. <laughs> Actually, yeah. the way you guys evangelized for it, I, I think I need to check this out. It sounds. Um, yeah, I need to pick alley. it up sooner or later. Like I, yeah, we need to do a spoiler cast. Again. Probably would, sooner yeah. rather than later, so that we can do a spoiler cast. I would unequip. It's not super long either. I think it's. I've heard like anywhere between four and six hours. Yeah, oh. if you power on through, if, if if you don't do any of the side stuff, which you don't need to do, like it's totally optional. You could probably get through it in like five hours. I would say. Okay. And a lot of the side stuff that I have seen is very much world building. It's not so really bad. tied to the main plot, but it is very good and worth reading. Yeah. I read the billiards one last night and it's like very, it's so well written. Also, do the fisherman. I was not expecting the fisherman yeah. to be moving, but holy I gotta shit, get, it's so good. I got to get the food. I got to get the food one, the food resource. I don't have that. Yeah. Uh, but, Anyways, yeah. sorry, we don't have to talk about Necrobeast for another 20 minutes. We could, but Jesus, it's But so unequivocally, good. everyone should play it. There's no, yeah. I don't have, I think it's for, it's, I think it is for everyone. It's I would tell my dad to play it. I would tell my brother to play it. Like, I would tell everyone here to play it. It's, it's uh, amazing. Out of the games that we've talked about over the past two and a half-ish years, I would be the most willing to push this one onto people, like, sight unseen and being like, yo, you really need to touch this. <laughs> Yeah, probably this in Disco Elysium would be that for me. So, uh, and that says something, I think. Uh, yeah, for sure. All right. Well, uh, departing from the visual novels, I've got I've got two things here. I've got a multiplayer uh, overcooked like, or I've got the newest Devolver joint. What do you want to hear about first? That's a that's a tough choice, Andre. <laughs> Moving well, out is a spectacular game, but I'd really like to hear about Carrion. I want to Carrion. All right. So I have to uh, jump up, it's... but I want to hear about it. All right. So I'll Carrion. See. Okay. Carrion is the newest uh, game from Devolver Digital, uh, Devolver Digital uh, publisher. Uh, you might have seen uh, Car the Carrion Beast in their Devolver showcase thing, uh, interviewing uh phil spencer yep is just a giant mass of meat and teeth and tentacles in Flesh. the most unpleasant way and so carrion is it's it's kind of a metroid uh <laughs> metroidvania like in a way like you're unlocking abilities that let you get through get into new areas and do combat but mo it's like mostly exploration um so you're going through this like underground like lab based thing as this 
bio bio weapon a very resident evil-esque looking thing that's tearing through people well, eating them up is, and is, then is, as is you it a, is it a bow is it a bio uh, weapon it is like never from resident evil it is I, it is never uh, classified whether this is a natural, like, like a thing they found, like an alien, or if they, like they grew it in a lab. Uh, at least not so far. Mm-hmm. There is some like stuff, like some story stuff that is like you come across at times uh, where you no longer control the uh, the carrion beast or whatever it is, uh, and they give you like some narrative stuff, but. Yeah, so you're this fleshy tentacle tooth beast, and you're just like flying through this underground uh, underground base. And I say flying, but you're just you've got tentacles that are just grabbing onto anything and everything, and so you can move freely around these levels. It there's nothing stopping you. It's like you're never getting to a point where like, oh well, I'm not big enough to get across this like jump this gap or something. You just like yep, I go over it, no problem. You will run into spots where you're like, oh, I can't get through here because I'm too big. Uh, but then you get an ability that lets you go through that. Uh, is, and is, so you... Is there, yeah. Is, is there any threat to you? Like Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So you do uh, come across humans uh, who are just, you know, they're like scientists or like IT people or whatever. And they're just like going about their day, like doing their job. And then suddenly this giant fleshy creature busts through a vent in the wall. And it's like, I'm going to eat you up. (laughs) And you just, you tear them, like, you know, tear them in half. And then you can grab them with your tentacles and fling them around to kill them. And then if you pull them to you, you just like devour them. And then as you devour more and more people, you grow and grow until you get very big and you've got like six mouths and you're just giant. Like, yeah, it's, it's, if luckily it's all pixely. So like you can't, like, there's no real detail. But, you know, if they made this in like the Resident Evil engine with like, you know, million, like multi million dollar budget or whatever, yeah, that'd totally. be uh, really disgusting. I think I need to set up my uh, parental discri- uh, restrictions on my Switch if I did this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, for the most part, at least early on, there's not like a ton of threats, but then you do start to come across people with guns. Or like these shields, so they're like, nope, you're not going to get me, And but you can figure out ways to get behind them, you know, uh, make them lose sight of you or go invisible once you get a certain power. And it's it's very satisfying to just like bust through these rooms, these areas super quick and grab people, eat them up, and then figure out whatever puzzle is going on. Sometimes it's like, oh, I got to push a button over there, then it's going to open a door here, but then like, oh, if I go through this laser beam, then it shuts the door, so I have to figure out how to make that work. Uh, so it's it's pretty cool. It's on Game Pass uh, for PC and Xbox, so check it out there if you're know if you into that. Yeah. Narratively... It- about Carrion? narratively is there really much going on with it Uh, Uh, so i've seen a couple things and it seems like it's more like oh here's a backstory i'm assuming like like it's not entirely clear on what it is like i I think it's like a slow reveal like oh here's what's happening but Mm -hmm. it's few and far between so far i think i've done like two or three sessions of that in like over like two or three hours okay um, and, but yeah it some, feels good to play something that can make or break a, a metroidvania e kind of game for me is the map is there a map is it good mm-hmm. no uh i have not i have <laughs> there's no map uh it's but it's pretty simple like it's not like a super complex thing right uh and so you basically you've got kind of like a hub and then you go from the hub the hub is still like big Uh, And like you're going through multiple zones, but you go from like a hub into an area and then you'll come out of that area and the area will tell you like, oh, you collected this much or you basically finished this much of the area. So you can go back if you want, but to get out of, there's no like health upgrades that I've seen. And I think to get out of the areas, you do need to get whatever like power upgrade is in there. So uh, you're not going to like miss out on much. I don't think. 
Okay. Because there have been some where it's like, I thought I finished it, but maybe not. But maybe they just want you to go back when you have later powers. It's yeah. How far are you into it? Uh, I'm like I said, I'm a few hours. Let me see if I can pull up the uh, the Xbox app here on the the old PC, and it'll tell me. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> are you playing with mouse and keyboard or gamepad? Uh, I'm playing with gamepad, though you can play with mouse and keyboard. Uh, I remember hearing someone say it felt like a mouse and keyboard game, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> It, it kind of it definitely uh like it doesn't feel bad with the, the controller and i think the way you move with the so to move with keyboard mouse and keyboard is you hold like left mouse click mm. but then you're using the mouse to like determine where you're shooting like your web or like where you're grabbing people from whereas with a controller you're using right stick to control that and like you're having to control distance as well as like direction so that can be a little tricky but it's not too bad Uh, but there is like sometimes you can get like a lot of body parts in a spot or a lot of like grates and like oh there's a there's like two grates and a lever here and i want to grab the lever but i keep grabbing the grates (laughs) but it's not it's nothing too awful uh let's see how many i've got 175 out of a thousand gamer score Oh, that's a lot. Uh, or a but... lot left, I should say. Yeah. I'm sorry, I only speak in trophies. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a couple bronzes. He needs to get a few more silvers and like two. I, I have. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got like half the trophy or half the achievements. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I've got like half of them, I guess. How long have you been playing for? Oh. Uh, a couple hours. Uh, I I can't see a way to see my okay. playtime. It's interesting that it's sounds like it's not super long, but maybe the mechanics wouldn't. Yeah, I'd, I'd play uh, this. There I'd are rather four... not have something over say it's welcome, you know. Yeah, yeah. That, I I'd agree with that. It's just been in development. There for are time, four. So yeah. Sure. There are four upgrades that I can tell, or there's maybe there's like there's four main upgrades, and then like gotcha. some of them will improve over time. But you start with one of them, and then I still don't have like the final one, which I think is like you push triangle, and then it does something, but I'm not sure what it'll do because I haven't gotten it yet. But I've got like an echo locator, which is like tells you like the areas where you've got like a biomass hive, I think, or like things that'll upgrade you. Yeah, the way you save is you just like go into a hole in the wall and then like spread your biomass and then like make a little like checkpoint thing yeah. where you can go back. That's how I do it in real life too. And then, <laughs> yeah. And but, uh, that you can restock your health there and stuff. So, but yeah, Allison, do you think this is a game that you're going to play? Because like for some reason, this seems like your kind of thing. Because it does. No, I am 100% like, interested yeah. in this. It's just de- <laughs> depending on. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely interested. I, I'm just trying fa- to decide if I want PC or Switch, but. Uh, my second favorite movie ever is The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. So I definitely need to, uh, I've been excited to play this for, since I saw it at PAX two years ago. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, and so I, oh, one of the cool things, I think one of the things I saw for it was like the fire in originally uh, a while ago, because when they let you on fire as some of the enemies do, you're just, if you're large, there's just this massive flaming thing flying through the level like, oh God, I got to get in some water. And it's, it looks real good. See, my, my least favorite part about when I played inside was the end of it. Because mm-hmm. you felt basically powerless. This sounds empowering. So yes, I uh, I think that's it, what appeals to me. <laughs> it is it is very akin to the end of Inside, except if that was a power fantasy and yes. not a... <laughs> if that were cool and not cool and scary and not just fucked, oh, so yes. disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> so would you get? Um, if real doll made um, no. A, a, a no. thing oh, of God. this carrying flesh monster. You know what? Hell yeah. <laughs> too, too many teeth. Too many teeth. Only, yeah, like there's no such thing. 
Only if uh, I can stretch it out and stick it to the wall. Just one of those sticky hands. Yeah, from the 90s. exactly. What a carrion yeah. thing. Uh, uh, yeah, so like, that's carrion. It's on PC and console game pass. Check it out. It's uh, pretty good. I have it installed. It's also like 200 megabytes. So yeah, uh, <laughs> it's, very it's got to install it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, indie games. It's they're no modern warfare. <laughs> that, that they are not. <laughs> indie games. Open, are almost exclusively what I play anymore. Carrion. I yeah, suck same, in a same. deep breath every time I launch Battle.net because I'm just like, oh, how is Modern Warfare going to ruin my bandwidth cap today? <laughs> <laughs> but also, Joel, I'm totally with you. Indie games are like 80% of my diet these days. Mm-hmm. 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 I, I mean, it's, it's a mixture of, uh, that. that's really where the creative engine and, and uh, new ideas are coming from right now. And then also most of them have the good sense to know where it's time to end and having a really sort of tight experience where so much of the AAA stuff is just bloat. And for me, at least yeah. in, in the way I play games. And and the older I get, the more that when, whenever a game touts like, Oh, a hun- over a hundred hours, I just get exhausted. Yep. <laughs> I'm just like, mm, it, it, shorter games are becoming more and more appealing for me for sure. Uh, how far are you into Which Persona is... 5 Royale? <laughs> oh god not very but you know <laughs> it's interesting that you still have that reaction even now while like you can't go anywhere and unemployed so you're, right but you're still true. just like no i don't you know what i don't need a hundred hour game i respect yeah. it it depends so much on the context i think for me if it's like yeah i would i mean like pillars of eternity is technically an indie game like the original one and i would not have wanted that game like they didn't need to make that game a tight six hours you know like it's cool that that is a huge sprawling epic um but yeah. then at the same time i would hate for necro barista to be padded out into a 35 hour experience when it works so well being the length that it is so i think for me it's very much like um i totally agree with the like indie games being more innovative and i think they are generally better edited like I'm pl- still playing and really enjoying Ghost of Tsushima, and that game is like significantly more than it needs to be in terms of its like scope and length. Um, but uh, like, I haven't even left the first map zone of three, and I've probably played 20 hours of it. And <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, yeah, I've heard I mean, people react to moving on to the third area, going, "Holy shit, there's another area." <laughs> um, <laughs> uh but um but at the same time i think like for certain experiences it if um it's it works for games to kind of sprawl out a little bit more too just depends yeah it's just the time and joy is not time wasted right and yeah totally. and if a huge 100 hour uh skyrim game is something that you know, you love then it's it's worth your time you know but i think the really the best games that have that sprawl are games in my opinion like skyrim which you can play through skyrim in like 12 hours if you want to or you can spend 100 hours exploring it and like going into every nook and cranny and seeing every dungeon and stuff and i think that's really the best like i've also been playing assassin's creed origins this year and that's a game that you can play through in probably like 15 20 hours or you can spend 80 hours going to every location and doing everything so i like that kind of choose your length thing girl but you know what else um, <laughs> is sprawling and generally takes a really long time our moving podcast. moving oh, <laughs> no, our podcast is accurate. i thought you already talked about moving out i'm sorry no tangented no, uh, wanted to hear uh joel Allison, wanted that, to hear about the newest that banger self, but... that self burn was really good though <laughs> yeah oh, it's uh real <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to hear about carrying it first because actually I've played Moving Out as well and I, I love that game. Uh, I, I yeah, think it's, it's great. I've been playing it with my girlfriend. It's a like an overcooked like, uh, you know, co-op and you're working together to complete objectives. In this case, it is uh, moving people's shit out of their house or their business, uh, depending on... Uh, and... So you're you're running around, uh, you're cute little characters. You can be like, I'm I'm always a dog in an astronaut helmet because that is uh, that's goals right there. Uh, but you uh, 
shout out to this game because you can actually play like a wheelchair uh mm-hmm. character so yeah, like any character can just be like i'm going to replace my lower half with a wheelchair and cool. you're not any differently abled than the regular but just like yep okay cool that's how i want to look and there's tons of different cosmetic stuff you can be like an egg put a little cowboy hat on it you can be a, a cat a pot of plant you know whatever what does it say and that be that the idea of being an egg with cowboy hat on it is making me want to play this game <laughs> <laughs> says uh, that you like fun yeah that's i uh, so the the basic arc this is you can play by yourself uh you can turn on an assist mode uh which would make it possible to play by yourself because a lot of the things in the game do require you to have two people to move just because they're so heavy you know like real life Mm -hmm. and uh but if you turn on the assist mode i think it does away with a lot of those like that part of it so it just becomes like oh i just want to mess around and not deal with any of like the more difficult parts of it i want to you know i just want to have fun and see what goofy stuff they have and so when you load into the level there you kind of get an overview of like here's the house here's all the stuff you need to put in the back of this truck and then you've got like a time you've got like oh four minutes for like the gold medal five minutes for the silver and then like six thirty for the bronze or something so you have to do it within at least six minutes 30 seconds and you're running through this house, jumping through windows, smashing glass, and, like, throwing boxes out of the house. And for the most part, that's okay. But occasionally, you'll run into something like, oh, this is a fragile box, so if you throw it out, it'll break and then respawn. But what you can do is you can throw it, and then your partner can catch it, and then they can put it in the truck. Uh, So there's a lot of, like, figuring out, okay, what's the fastest way we can get all this stuff out of here Okay, first thing, let's run up to the top floor and throw everything out the window. Like, grab this couch, out the window. Bed, out the window. All these boxes, out the TV, out the window. It doesn't matter if it's broken. Uh, It just needs to be in the truck. And and And, it all tumbles over in a really funny way, too, when you're throwing stuff out, too. There's a bit of physics on it. And then as you're you're filming this truck, it gets harder and harder to fit stuff inside the truck. And so you have to end up coordinating if you're playing two-player with your partner. And uh, there's a button that you both start swinging swaying the piece of furniture back and forth. And you have to time the release just right to throw it up into the actual truck itself. And uh, my my wife and I have a very combative nature sometimes when we play games together. So it quickly devolved into like, no, you screwed that up. You didn't time that button right. What, What were you thinking? can go pick that back up and yeah uh, it's 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 it is one of those games where like uh it's it's team building and also a trial if you <laughs> are not yes. cooperating well yeah. it, like it's it's funny but uh, like it's funny to watch like what happens but also it can just be so frustrating like i was playing a uh, kind of like a mid late game level and it's there's just you're in a room and there's just the lava everywhere and you've got to like maneuver all these platforms and just my girlfriend kept falling off the platform we i'm like we have a minute we need to get these two things to the truck in like the next minute or else we have to restart and she just kept falling in the lava i'm like no uh eventually i think we did get it done but we did have to like replay that level twice but Mm -hmm. and then there's some time like there's sometimes there are things that you don't need to take in the truck it's like so then you're like, oh, well, I'm used to taking all the boxes, but then you realize, oh, wait, I don't need any of those boxes that I just spent like a minute putting into the truck. Okay, well, there goes the restart. And it's not so much for the time. It's just like I just filled 20 boxes into a truck and didn't need any of them, and that's going to take up a lot of space. But if you've got someone to play with and you want to play a co-op fun time game, uh, the moving out it's it's pretty funny and it's uh it's fun to play that's cool would Erica, recommend mm-hmm. is that the kind of game you would play because i know you liked overcooked and i did like overcooked you, you, a lot you did not like overcooked too as much yeah i that's true um <laughs> <laughs> I, it's something i would look at i don't know if, how finicky it needs me to be with like mm-hmm. my controls and stuff but uh, yeah. it's i definitely enjoyed overcooked a lot um 
and I have somebody to play with, so I will yeah. look at it, it at the so, very least. <laughs> like I said, it has that assist mode, and there's a demo on Steam, uh, so you can try it out. So without, I will also like, say spending the money on it. I I liked Overcooked in theory, but I have challenges with it because I feel like you have to be pretty precise and uh, have really good timing with Overcooked to be effective. I think moving out is a little more forgiving on its timing mm -hmm. of things too. If you're just concerned about progressing through the levels of the game and not getting the highest score, uh, that's how my wife and I approached it. And we had a lot more fun with it that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. I gifted there are like, over tons of bonus ob objectives. I gifted Overcooked to my sister um, and her boyfriend for Christmas one year, um, and they played exactly one level of it. <laughs> and then broke um, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was more like my sister texted me a picture of her boyfriend just collapsed on the floor, exhausted from yelling at her <laughs> to try oh, to hi. do stuff. <laughs> so maybe this one will be a little bit nicer for them. <laughs> Because in Overcooked, there is so much like you're relying on each other because like mm -hmm. sometimes one of you is in one half the kitchen, one of you is in the other. Right. At least here, there are things you have to move together. Like you have to work together to move a sofa unless you turn on the assist mode, maybe. I'm not entirely sure how it works. But but for a lot of it, it's just you're grabbing things and trying to get them in the truck as fast as you can while also leaving room to make sure everything can get in the truck. Mm -hmm. so there is like some independence but also strategizing together like okay you go here i'll go here or you go up throw things down to me and i'll put them in the truck stuff like that yeah sounds fun except i hate moving yeah. too so <laughs> moving sucks this makes yeah. it fun because you just get to throw everything you don't have to be careful <laughs> you you jump through the windows it's great mm -hmm. fair enough <laughs> and you know what else is great you? sometimes Sometimes it's bad. It's absolute <laughs> horseshit sometimes. The news. Because <laughs> uh, that's going to do it for games. And uh, kind of, but there are a whole bunch of games this week uh, announced in the Xbox Games Showcase. Yeah. Which we all watched. I only watched like the bits I cared about. <laughs> I didn't yeah, have time to sit to and it. watch the whole thing. So I just looked up what was announced Honestly, and then watched the trailers for those. That's probably the best way to approach it. <laughs> I, I respect your guys' podcast more than ours, so I watched it last night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. We appreciate that. <laughs> Suck it, Alex and Getty. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, so... Uh, Xbox, they had their like third party games thing in May, June, June. I don't even remember. No, May, they didn't do anything in June, right? What is time? Yeah, I don't but know. That was it like make everyone's like, anymore. there's no gameplay. What are you, what are you doing? And then here they were like, okay, you're gonna see the first party games. That was all they showed was first party or not all they didn't only show first party games, but all they showed was games. There was no mm -hmm. console news you could argue there was game pass stuff but like they didn't talk about x cloud or like any of that any changes to the service just hey these are coming to x cloud or coming to game pass and i guess technically that means they're all coming to x cloud because isn't that the thing i don't know anyway we don't really know for sure yeah they need to leave that's i don't know anyway yes so <laughs> they announced a bunch of games uh Keely in the pre-show, who would not, absolutely not stop talking about Halo, also Nobody brought did. us. <laughs> yeah, but Keely made guess. them. Yeah, every guest was like, oh, Halo, 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 Halo. Yeah, uh, but we did get a few uh, pre-show announcements. Uh, we got Dragon Quest XI coming to Xbox for the first time ever, Dragon Quest on the Xbox. We got Exomecha, which looks like Titanfall mixed with Battlefield meets Transformers. I didn't. I missed this. This was in the pre-show. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this was the pre-show. It's like it, a multiplayer game. It kind of looks like Titanfall 2, but if the mechs involved were more like Gundams. 
sure and also yeah, but... maybe not as cool looking now that i'm looking at funny <laughs> images from yeah. it but, but it's got a lot of like vehicles and stuff so it's more than just like oh there's a big robot there's like yeah, yeah. helicopters and tanks and like hey the premise sounds hoverboards cool. Uh, so you can sign up on their website for a beta uh, on Xbox and Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and PC. It so sounds cool, but so you know what else sounded cool? Astral Chain. Anyways, oh no, yeah, that's not good. Okay. It's fine. I think it's uh, a pretty, it's a. I, I I enjoyed what I played of it. I I need to actually well, actually finish it, but. Uh, also, I think Astral announced. Train is the last game I want to play in 2020. See, that's that. the yeah. issue. Yeah. Okay, fair like, enough. I have Super time to play it now. No thanks. Yeah. I have time to play it now, and I have it Pass. downloaded on my Switch, and I'm like, I uh, don't know about that. Yeah, you, you just, <laughs> I, I didn't think about the, the, yeah, okay. <laughs> not really, it's not really Astral Chain's fault. Yeah, tr that's true. That's true. Anyway. All right. Yes. Uh, also announced Echo Generation. Which that game looks, looks yeah. a little bit cool. like. Uh, yeah. Uh, in in our chat, Pat was like, "This game looks like it's like you that us two would really like it." And I was watching this trailer, and I'm like, "Yep, I I like the vibe." And then suddenly there's like card battling mechanics, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, "Yup, <laughs> yup." <laughs> yeah, I was into that for sure. <laughs> it looks really good. <laughs> and Holy then... life was determined by card battling. Ish. Well, if yeah. you live in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh, and people come at you with a gun because they want your cards, like or if Bandit you're a Keith. professional Magic: The Gathering player, yeah, that's true too. Uh, but also announced the creator of Sonic, creator of Nights into Dreams. I, I don't saw Balan Wonderland. Is, is, yeah. is people, some people seem excited. I don't know. It doesn't speak to me, like but. A, people who are into that stuff seem excited yeah, it's like uh it looks like a theater kid musical thing i don't know <laughs> so it, it was it was a sega person and people seemed excited about that guy that guy doing a thing i don't know i'm happy for everyone I'm, involved who's excited and working on it i feel like we're running out of names for video games <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're just like, I don't know, let's come up with a word. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's true. And Halo. Uh, with that, <laughs> we got into Jeff Keeley's favorite game. Halo. Uh the Doritos of video games. Halo Infinite. That's not fair. <laughs> yeah, that's not fair. It's Death Stranding. That's his favorite video game. <laughs> <laughs> that's only because he's in it. <laughs> we don't know. Maybe Keeley's in Halo. <laughs> Oh he God! Be. I hope he's not. been under the mask the whole time. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Keely is the master chief. Keely is the master chief. <laughs> Jeff one one seven. Can you imagine a funnier moment than if the, the helmet came off and you finally saw his face and it was Keely doing that like stupid headshot grin oh, that he does? Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe Bill Gates, but uh, yeah, it's a it's a close. Bill Gates is Cortana. <laughs> Oh no. Okay, we've gone too oh, far with this. That <laughs> recontextualizes so much fan art that I have my seen that I'm sure exists. <laughs> uh yeah, so they showed Halo Infinite. They showed a somewhat open world looking thing that like like they showed a big map and so it is open world. Uh you there's stuff to shoot and kill and you drive around the, the thing that is tough about that that i've been thinking about more and more is i don't think it's going to be this i think it will be more of an open world but if you think about i forget the name of the level but there's that early level in halo um not silent cartographer the one early right after you land where mm -hmm. it's pretty long and wide open and there's like yeah. the three different outposts you have to go to and you can do them in either whatever order you want this could have been, I mean, th that game didn't have a map in the same way, but like, yeah, you could have made that level. That level is technically open world. So for yeah. all we know, this could be a bunch of levels like that, that have m just have a map. So it's hard to know for sure. Yeah. I would assume uh, it's more like a far cry, but it's hard to know. Yeah. I, yeah. With the way they kind of zoomed out it, I think it's probably going to be more like confined areas. Cause they, 
even in the Q&A they did afterwards, it was like closed door. They never said open world. They said like open spaces or like open map or something like that. It, but they were very careful to not say open world. Uh, so I imagine it'll be like zones, kind of like how Destiny is, where you've Which got like open like, zones and then go into like smaller things, but you can like backtrack and go to areas and stuff. Which but is vastly less interesting to me personally. If they're interconnected, like if it's like, okay, we've got like a big area and then like if you're not going through a loading screen, but halos are big. I don't think you're going to like travel across the entire halo. Like we theorized. And I, guess I the... think that's because they, they have to make this game for the Xbox one. If it maybe. was like a, if it was a series X game only, maybe that would be like a thing, which like we have a whole, an entire halo modeled for you. At, at most not here. Sorry. Uh, at, at most I could see it being like destiny and that they show you these different, you know, parts of the ring but really it's a it's a contained zone which in is, my yeah. opinion is very much like another halo i won't play uh, <laughs> um i think like i don't know i think if they wanted if they really went for it like we're i'm playing ghost recon breakpoint with friends right now and that game is not like qualitatively amazing or anything <laughs> but one thing it does really well is it has an utterly stunning looking open world that is enormous and you can like snipe an enemy from 500 meters away. Um, and that is such a cool thing. And I think if they really went for it with a halo, if they kind of had, if they built a better game around a world like that, it would be awesome. But I don't, I also agree that that's probably not what they're doing. Um, so I think the, like the thing that, the thing with this for me was it didn't look like a like next gen Halo. It looked no. like Halo. Like it didn't the it open world stuff again, it looked like Halo One, like Halo One had open areas that you drove around. So yeah. they didn't like show anything exceptional. They showed a map and there's an upgrade screen, apparently. We didn't see it, but there's a tab. And so I think with both basically everything in this presentation, I walked away going so this is supposed to be next gen. Do you think that has something to do with just the inherent like art design of Halo in general? And like Master Chief is just a big uh, like uh, you know meta soldier Dream thing dude. with this is <laughs> very basic outline and no no complexity to the way he looks. The environments are pretty basic. The enemy grunts are are pretty well defined and and you know not too complicated looking and. They kind of talked about this a little bit on Waypoint Radio's um, teardown of this stuff, and and uh, which I only bring up because I'm going to make the exact same point that they did, um, which is that part of it is when Halo first came out um, 20 years ago, it had a very distinct visual style at the time, mm -hmm. but then it's been 20 years, and there's been seven, no, nine Halo games, and... Uh, there have been lots of there's been i mean in halo has certainly halo drew plenty of inspiration from starship troopers and other like i'm not saying that they were it's not derivative but even more since halo there has been more science fiction that takes that very like um simple military sci-fi look so it's pretty generic now whereas when it first came out for video games it was a pretty unique and and defining art style for that thing now to your point it's like yeah that's a grunt uh, i mean it's, <laughs> that, that's what they look like but i actually was yeah. thought some of the technically some of it was really rough not we've talked a lot about and alex makes the point a lot too that like there's not going to be a huge technical leap in terms of visuals which even considering that i thought like the textures on that brute that shows up at the end were like, mm -hmm. what are we looking at? <laughs> this looks bad. It looked like yeah. a 360 game. Uh, so some of it was really good. Like the opening part before it got into gameplay with that character, his face animated in a way that was not, it, it was, it was stylized to a degree, but I thought it looked fantastic. And it, it and, looked um, better. It looked better than previous halo games. That's for sure. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, um, the, the lighting and stuff, some of that was really impressive early on, but then as soon as it got in motion, everything from now we're in the, the suit to the end of the demo, I was like, this looks rough. This looks like an alpha or which it probably may have been, I don't know. Um, or yeah. it looks like, 
you know, an old halo, not even yeah, as good it, as halo. It looks 5 like halo. Really. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. I, I did appreciate a lot the of it is intentional. It yeah. It did yeah, look I fluid. So. It did I look think, very fluid. And I think to some extent, some of that simplicity in the art design is down to, um, gameplay making it, uh, it's a stylistic choice to an extent. I think some of the like yeah. smooth textures and lack of tessellation and lack of complexity in like geometry is there yeah. because they want you to move very fast through those areas and kill things and be able to visually identify targets and stuff very quickly, which is maybe will be borne out into really fantastic gameplay. I don't know. Uh, I believe they have said as much that it is like a deliberate choice to like, yeah harken back to halo one uh Which is, particularly I mean, that could because, be cool in in yeah in totality it, but they're just i i think that again like, like every event so far the messaging has been questionable and Money, they yeah talked up like oh we're gonna see halo you know halo infinite gameplay and then walked away going yeah i guess that that was gameplay it kind of <laughs> met my expectations personally but i understand that for other people they wanted something more I, I was i'm i'm like a lapsed halo fan i loved everything through reach and odst but i totally fell off after three four i mean i played halo four and some of five and i just didn't like them um mm. so all right well i gotta say we can run down this list and if you uh have thoughts and or feelings about uh, any of these games please uh speak up what were you gonna say Alex, hold your peace before we move i was gonna say i could not care any less about halo and i'm not gonna play that game like this there's like i would say less than one percent chance i'll play that game um the the thing that i saw um and maybe we should talk about this at the end is that the reception to this whole event was fairly negative um including in our chat except for pat i think pat was kind of warm on it i wouldn't say hot on it but at least warm whereas the rest of us compared to other stuff yeah yeah like the it, there was, was just stuff that they talked about in this that i liked more than at other events but yeah right and but i think and again uh, maybe i should keep these thoughts till the end until we talk about all the games but maybe it's also good to talk about it at the start to set expectations but i think something interesting that microsoft has been doing where like we look at Sony and we look at all these individual games that were like, yeah, I want to play that. Oh, I want to play Bug Snacks. Yeah, I want to play Miles Morales. Blah blah blah. Like, um, and that event was a success for a lot of people, uh, even though Sackboy was there and it looked like garbage. But like, it's Sony's approach was very much in the traditional video game industry sense of how we look at things, how we look at press conferences for E3 and stuff like that. And Microsoft is approaching things from a completely different angle because of Game Pass and because of xCloud. Yep. And they aren't really caring about generations as much. They're not caring as much about selling you a box with a disc in it with this individual game. They're selling you a service which has access to all of these things. And like they're what it seems like their approach is kind of take more risks, put throw thing more things at the wall for people to see what sticks for them. And then like there's a lower risk because there's a lower barrier to entry, quote unquote barrier to entry by purchasing one service and trying all of these things rather than, you know, getting each individual thing as a discrete purchase. And I think why that's relevant in particular to Halo is when I look at that stuff, I go, well, the stuff they showed is like, whatever, it could be interesting. I don't really, it doesn't move the needle for me that much either way, yeah. but knowing how they're, they've approached, um, frankly, state of decay, which we'll get to more in a second, um, Forza, um, sea of thieves, they've put these games out and then a lot of the master chief collection too have come out and people have been pretty tepid on them. And then they've right. taken the time to listen to feedback and put something together that is much more cohesive and interesting to specific player bases. So to me, I look at that halo infinite stuff and I'm like, there's the bones of something that could be really cool there. It could come out and it could be a massive disappointment, but I actually have some confidence that if that happens, then maybe a year after it comes out, it will be something that I want to check out because they have done a really good job of support because they're looking at a lot of stuff as services, but not from a traditional games as service model either for more of a, these are discrete experiences that exist on a larger service. So I think that is ultimately why I was positive, more positive than I think most people on a lot of the stuff. Cause I sort of take the long view on it. Yeah. 
And I think looking at it that way is interesting. And I think it is a good move on Microsoft's part, even if I in particular found this event pretty underwhelming too. But anyways, yeah. if we want to jump into the games, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's talk about <laughs> yeah, we, these we, games. Yeah, that say, I, I have thoughts, but I know that we want to <laughs> move on. So yeah, yeah, we can we can kind of circle back around to that, but sure. we can talk about the games first and then we can talk about, you know, the value or perceived value of this event and whatnot. Uh, so next up was a State of Decay 3. Pat, I imagine you care somewhat about this. Totally. State of Decay is super interesting and really, really cool. And I'm someone who is so sick of zombies. Um, but State of Decay is like really, really interesting. It's janky, broken in some ways, but uh, way more bold and trying interesting new things than most games in the space for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, then we got Forza Motorsport, in, but in, no in, date. In no, my, the cars in look my, good. In my notes, I have for Forza Motorsport. Forza, the, the, Forza Motorsport. Forza Motorsport. I have <laughs> it pretty. Yep. It looked yep. good. It, it, the, them wheels is around, baby. <laughs> it, it, it looks like that. I mean, it was it was a rendered in engine. If the wheels right, aren't around, so like, they fucked up. Like that's yeah, that's well, true. Cars that's, don't. I trust me. As an F one fan, I can tell you, cars don't work. If wheels don't go round. And it's also uh, interesting that it is Forza Motorsport, not Forza Motorsport nine. It's eight, a nine, eight, 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 nine. Eight, nine. It's nine. Yeah. I think it's nine. Anyway, it'll be a, it'll totally be like a platform mm -hmm. thing. Like it's that 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 will be the only yeah. Forza Motorsport that the only Forza Motorsport skew that releases on Xbox Series it, X will be that one. It's that's the only thing that makes sense with yeah. the Game Pass stuff now is to make it a platform that people. You have to maybe you have to buy the new cars or something or battle passes but, or sort of whatever race. Yeah, passes, yeah, whatever. something. But they'll they'll well, monetize it beyond the beginning. But doesn't Forza the games Horizon, aren't so different from doesn't doesn't Forza yeah. Horizon Four have a battle pass? It's sort of it's like it's a, a season pass, never ending season pass of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. The big the big touchstone is uh, F one twenty twenty, a fantastic game which has the podium pass, which is a dumb name for that. <laughs> Oh, it was the battle royale uh, thing I was thinking about. Anyways, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right. Okay. Well, next up is Everwild, the new game from Rare, which yeah. was teased at some point uh, before, but now yeah, we got game like a trailer. Uh, trailer looks good. Trailer looks kind of Mononoke ish. Oh yeah, very much. But like, I would need to see gameplay before making solid. Yeah, there's like choices. nothing about how it, what what it is like it was just uh, it was, because they don't know what the game is right. yeah i don't think they, they know said, yeah they're still that's trying what they to said, figure that, that out they're like they're it's still like up in the air like it looks really really good and yeah, and i does. like the vibe of it a lot but yeah the the, the, the nature is it you sorry yeah sorry i didn't mean to jump over you no. uh no, the uh the nature uh, focus and the sort of cycle of life kind of concepts that they're doing with appeals to me a lot. So it's, I'm, I mean, yeah. yeah. And Sea of Thieves is awesome. So, I mean, now it wasn't great when it launched, but it is so cool now. So I trust them to do cool stuff with that mm -hmm. and yeah. unique stuff with that. So, and, and to me, it kind of looked like they were hearkening back to old school rare, like what you would see on N64, like kind of just. I, I can't say day. no, not quite. Um, I'm, I'm talking good Donkey rare. Kong 64. Yeah, Donkey Kong. Like in in terms of like just kind of like it seems more lighthearted. It like um, when the deer at the end is all glowy. I was like that reminds me of Jiggies from Bands of Bands of It's Kuzu. funny. I got the opposite from it, which is wow. This is going to be an emo. They're trying to go for deep heartstring pulling oh, totally. here, and <laughs> which that's, is that's, interesting. That's kind of what I was also wanting to go with, is it does remind me of Princess Mononoke in that yeah. like, it is going for like a more emotional story that's, you know, kind of touching those heartstrings. So it's We'll see. I think it'll be interesting. I hope it's collaborative in the way Sea of Thieves is and that yeah. they figure out what that game is before the world ends. Yeah, so you can play accordion and puke. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, next up. Tell me why the newest game from Don't Nod, which looks... we got some information about at some point before. Uh, this yeah. is the game with the trans main character. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. Every time I see this game, it looks. I mean, obviously that's amazing, but at the same time, I mean, it could be amazing. Let's put it that way, firmly. But uh, mm -hmm. at the same time, it looks like very uninteresting to me. 
But one thing that's cool that they did was they put out a big fact that basically was a way to navigate content warnings surrounding some of that content. Um, and it, it asks specific questions about like, does this game include uh, dead naming? Um, what kind of trauma is, should have, like, what is there this kind of trauma in the game? And then it's like, Oh, spoilers, but here's the answer. If you want to know before you play it, which I think is super oh, that's cool. Really and, good. Like, every Especially... video game should do that regardless yeah. of what the content is. So it's cool. Yeah, no, that was really, really cool. I I don't know <clears throat> if I'll play it, but I was just very interesting to see that this is a, a game where one of the main characters is named Allison and they have a sibling who is uh, trans. And I'm like, okay, this is coming real close <laughs> to home for me. <laughs> it's very, it's, it's very interesting. So I, I might have to play it just because of that. Uh, it's a very specific connection except it looks like they have to shoot their mom at some point which oh. i don't think is which is a... not what i would do <laughs> no um, <I'm... laughs> hey, it's it's a don't nod game there's probably choices who knows yeah the, Maybe. that was in the trailer i'm not that was not a spoiler yeah uh i'd like yeah, to make I, it I very think... clear that that is not how i would approach things <laughs> they also clarified in their pet in the in their fact that that is any any of that is not related to like transphobia so mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, uh, the uh, what was it? Uh, 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 the game that I play, uh, Life is Strange Two. There, there it is. Life is Strange Two. I thought was very good last year, and uh, so I'm, you know, I'm on board for more don't nod stuff. I don't think this is the same team. I believe yeah. this is a different like they team make, at uh, don't nod, but they make high quality I mean, stuff. I can just never get into it. I've tried Life is Strange. Go fuck yourself, you guys. <laughs> hey, yeah. I'm with him. I've I've never finished either of the Life is Strange games. Yeah, I loved uh, Life is Strange one, and I liked uh, was it Into the Storm. What's the second one? I, was, never, uh, I never played that one before the, the storm. But, yeah, uh, before the storm. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Uh, but uh, I, I hadn't gotten to two yet. I, I think it just uh, the the topics they were broaching was a little bit too much for me at the time. Sure. Uh, but I, I respect what they're doing, and I, I trust them more than others to try to broach a sensitive topic with yeah. respect. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yep, definitely. Especially, I, I would say, especially after Life is Strange 2, I think they did a much better job of kind of handling some of the more yeah. sensitive subjects than they might have done in the first one. Uh, next up on our list of games is... Ori is coming to PC, or no, Ori is on PC. Ori is getting a 120, 120 <laughs> FPS mode for console. It was whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're making use of that feature, and that game will look good at 120 yeah. FPS if you play it on a monitor or a TV that has it, and most to, people I, won't. I so. bounced off that game really hard, but I got to get back to it. I think I want to play the PC yeah, I version get now that it, it hopefully is not as janky. I got stuck somewhere. <laughs> yeah i mean it was a mess on pc when do. it came out i tried it on xbox yeah. and it still didn't really i just I, 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 I had just played the first ori so i think i just was worried out when it came out yeah i, I loved the start of, of ori uh too but uh yeah. then then alex maybe pay, play a bunch of weird betas that uh <laughs> got in the way of uh me playing a damage i was enjoying so uh i'll have to get back to that too <laughs> yeah that's well that's our solemn promise to you if you ever come back we will never make you play anything Oh, thank God. Can uh, you can you guys be my like pod stepfather or something like that and let me uh, we'll, we'll, come away we'll for... do a swap. You, uh, Super GG can have Sam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one person right. who's not here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, also the one person who is barely on the podcast. But, you know, he has fatherly duties as with a newborn child. Not newborn anymore, but a young child. That'll do it. Uh, yeah. That'll teach him force people to play anything you know lose them uh being being forced to play world. things oh. that i don't like <laughs> uh hey you should be totally excited about this pat uh well, outer world not is uh got dlc coming kelsey beecham who wrote for the outer wilds has worked on this peril on gorgon dlc for the world more or less wrote outer wilds along with alex beecham is the creator of the outer wild of outer wilds um and then kelsey wrote pretty much the whole story you know with him but primarily her um so yeah this is a 
this DLC is something I want to play, even though I did not like the the base mm-hmm. Outer Worlds at all. Uh, <laughs> all right. Next up, we got Grounded, aka Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. This game rules, by the way. Mm-hmm. Is is it out? Is it a beta? No, is there a, was a demo during probably... the Steam Summer Games Fest. Ah, okay. okay, it was really fun. Like it's a survival game, so if you don't like that at all, you won't like it. But not at all. It is. It is. It is. Um. It is not a survival game where it's like, oh, let's build our base and then fight waves of enemies or whatever. It is a survival game that's like, you're basically playing Fallout, but instead of having a town to go to, you need to build your infrastructure yourself. Um, Because it it still is very much like, oh, you have a quest and there's a pin on the map and you go there and then you fight a thing and then you get a piece of lore and and a a weapon or something. It's so it's it's not really like a survival game in the Minecraft or or Rust sense. It's it's much more of a narrative uh, RPG that also is one where you have to build up a shelter. Survival games are ones where theme really matters to me. Like I, I find state of decay interesting and I enjoyed number two for the dozen hours I played it, but I kind of fell off cause I'm a little tired of the post apocalyptic sure. stuff. Uh, and the fact that it is honey, I shrunk the kids. It's just like they're, they're appealing to my nostalgia kind of like, yeah, do you guys notice in stores anymore they're pandering to our generation a lot more <laughs> oh sure. they sure are <laughs> like it's it's a toxic brew of uh consumerism that <laughs> has to fall hello recording my computer is having very serious issues um i'm gonna jump back into the room pretty soon but i need to figure this out because this is bad um okay let's get back in there One moment. Sorry, YouTube friends. People keep saying it's like Skyrim. It looked like Skyrim but, from that trailer. But also, that game's probably not out for another like two, three, two and a half, three years. Yeah. Um, uh, I imagine. Obsidian has so. better writing than... Uh, Bethesda in their games generally. So uh, if it's good to play, um, then I would enjoy that very much because Elder Scrolls is one of my favorite series. But even I could admit that like Obsidian doing that was was mm-hmm. really exciting. So well, also it's, it's probably going to be oh, it's going to be a long ass time before Elder Scrolls Six shows up. I mean, I imagine Starfield's at least a year or two off. So yeah, I have a feeling Elder Scrolls Six could end up being a very important game for Bethesda Softworks. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, eh, they've got the Elder Scrolls online. They'll be fine. Uh, no, but for that studio in particular, like oh, for, yeah, maybe. Not, 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 I don't have any worries about Zenimax or Bethesda as like a larger mm-hmm. publishing company, but for like specifically for that developer that makes the Elder Scrolls and Fallout games, I could see they the Elder just Scrolls need to repackage Skyrim and they'll be fine again. It's, yeah but every copy of elder scrolls 6 comes with a copy of skyrim at a certain point fallout 76 was rough and fallout 4 was rough and uh if 76 was a different studio yeah but it was sort of a different studio if you look at the you watch the no clip documentary they worked pretty closely on it too Mm -hmm. um but anyway, yeah, they, they're, they're a little on the rocks. They haven't had a win for a bit, <laughs> um, and they could really use one. Uh, all right, next up, As Dusk Falls. Uh, it's this one just a, went. A visual novel? I don't know. Right, flew right on past me, and I waved goodbye, and <laughs> it just kept going. <laughs> I vaguely right. remember thinking it looked fine. It did. Yeah. So the art looked good. The art uh, did look like, good. I thought it was an interesting I, vibe. I thought Rami Ishmael had a really good tweet. Kind of, I think he was subtly subtweeting this game that was like, you know, what would be an interesting place to set a game? A uh, lone highway in, and then he named like five countries that weren't the United States <laughs> because well, it's just like yeah. yet another one of these, man. <laughs> like, uh, there, there's Is parts this... where it's. You know, if it's if they're an American company, I don't I don't know about. No, I know. Yeah, of course. There's there's a lot to unpack there. But yeah, I just was like, I don't need another story in the American Southwest. 
as an American. <laughs> but it could be good. It could be cool. I don't know. Uh, Joel, you were going to say something? Oh, I think I was just going to time you what you said. If, if it's a U.S. based developer, you know, Isn't people, the developer people draw. You... Sorry. Oh, I, I thought the Euro- developer was European for this. Oh, I didn't well, know. Fuck I was them. Just... What the fuck are they doing? <laughs> no, and I would not say fuck them in any case. Like, Wait, I'm not. Let me see if I can I, find I that. just did. But but that does that does make me wonder how well they're going to be able to draw on the American experience, uh, given their background. Like, just what I was going to say is, it, it makes sense to me a U.S. based developer with a team centralized in the United States are going to tell a story that's personal to them, and, and they might still have an interesting story to tell from the outside looking in. So there's still a good possibility to have a, a valuable lesson and a story to tell about it but it makes me wonder from you know how they're going to be able to really tell it in a powerful way you know looks like they're london based yeah it looks like they're london based and the person who was talking that the the reason i thought so is that the person who was talking about it um on the uh uh on the xbox stream was french so uh who lives in london and that's where they're based so yeah we'll see i don't know it didn't grab me uh all right hellblade 2 this is also... the only game i'm excited about on this list and, <laughs> and, well, and they showed nothing about it to be able to maintain that excitement for a long time because yeah, yeah. They... <laughs> who knows Boy, <laughs> know. i mean yeah we just soon. don't know anything other than that it's an epic rpg it's like has fucking sick ass art that's for sure yeah, yeah. you can, you can <laughs> see like, some check out uh, location diaries <laughs> yeah, yeah iceland is yeah. a fucking iceland. rad place to set a video games oh yeah like that need more video iceland games. is a location is is yeah. so cool um i just love the first one so much and y'all slept on it so hard that first it, so, game of the yeah. year <laughs> i'm gonna play it this hey, year was, i'm gonna I play it yeah, with, yeah, really with, to play it. with me but <laughs> pat you need to play this game yeah i know <laughs> I, I know i will really connect with it i'm sure it, i will because yeah. it, it was it was a blind spot for me too and, and but that trailer at the dame awards really just <sighs> was like i need to i need to see what the original was yeah, yeah. and where the, they're drawing this from the art style is like very in one of my like pantheon of like the kinds of art that really speak to me that like horror norse art is very high on that list so for sure um yeah it's it's powerful and terrifying right just the the visuals are going with yeah hellblade one it has an issue where the moment-to-moment gameplay where you're doing the puzzles isn't always the greatest like yeah uh, and the combat is sometimes a little meh but like the story and the delivery and the presentation is what you're really there for. And hey, the- you're talking to a diehard Assassin's Creed fan. You don't have to sell me any further. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about some meh combat <laughs> and questionable moments, moment gameplay. Yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely that. If you can go into that knowing that that's yeah. what to expect, to like, I think you'll yeah, enjoy I'll yourself. It. Yeah. All right. Speaking of well, meh moments, next- moment gameplay. <laughs> Psychonauts two Ooh, best like <laughs> yeah I I really want to like Psychonauts and I hopefully the uh this new one's really like I love the aesthetic and I love the atmosphere yeah. of Psychonauts but man some of that platforming in the first one is 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 rough it's I have impossible. come along <laughs> one grievance to air. I love Tim Schafer. He's one of my favorite people, probably on the planet, like top 100 people that I cool. like. He, Don't I met you him at dare besmirch Jack Black. I met, I'm not about to. I love Jack Black also. He's probably on that list too. I met Tim Schafer at PAX 10 years ago, and he was an incredibly nice and really cool dude. Um, he watched me play a Brutal Legend demo. That was awesome. Uh, the man needs to stop putting Jack Black in front of a microphone and then have it not be what another did I just tell you? game. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, it's not okay, Jack Black's fault. Okay. When he was when they were like, "Oh, we're gonna do the song. The song's gonna be good." I was like, "I was like, are they announcing legend? another brutal legend?" And yeah. I yeah. Wasn't, wasn't one of them wearing a brutal legend shirt too? Yes, I believe yeah. Jack Black was. And Jack hey, Black has you said know what? numerous times he would do another brutal legend, and Tim Schafer has said numerous times he would do another brutal legend. So it's well, like, hey, now they've got me. now they've got money exactly uh, to throw around because as like an independent studio, I think that's a little bit harder to justify. Totally, yeah, yeah. 
But this now is that the Microsoft owns them. Like, okay, sure, Brutal Legend Two, do it. I thought this, this was is my moment. this is the Pixar thing where they do five Toy Stories so we can get Up and Wally and <laughs> yeah, uh, in, Inside Brutal Out Legend Two, or yeah. or alternatively, uh, oh damn it, what's his name, dude? What directed Happy Feet and then eventually got, came back George to Mad Max? No. George Miller. <laughs> Oh yeah, so they're, well, they're yeah he does. He, his 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 route is so bizarre because it's like Mad Max, Mad Max, Mad Max. A couple other movies. Uh, one of the, one of them is the medical drama Lo- Lorenzo's Oil, and yeah. then yep. <laughs> you have Happy Feet. You have uh, Babe Pig in the City. Then Happy Feet One, Happy Feet Two, and then Mad Max Fury Road. And you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> See, <laughs> Don't maybe- understand. But I, you gave me hey, Fury Road, too. so I yeah, don't I was need to say, understand. If he <laughs> needs to direct like five or six kind of weird, not necessarily bad, but not like great movies. movies to then direct like the best movie of the decade. That's fine with me. Yeah, <laughs> Fury Road's so good. If, if Double Fine does the same thing, all the better. Yeah. But I will say that. Are, are, are that you telling thing? me you think Brutal Legend Two could be the best game of all time? <laughs> Maybe yeah. you never know. The problem. I, that I they, feel like comparing Brutal Legend to uh, Fury Road is like very, very. I, I also really like Brutal Legend, so <laughs> it's good. I, I like Brutal Legend. It's a game, but, but like. <laughs> but uh, the um, they need to do Brutal Legend Two while well, Ozzy Osbourne is still with us. Jeez. <laughs> um, so but, gotta well, get on I mean, that. If if what? if psychonauts can uh, make the uh, platforming good, I I will be on so on board for it. Yeah, I'm, honestly, definitely. And, yeah. and one thing about that trailer is it it had the double fine weirdness you want. Totally. Yeah. yeah. It was great. Oh, yeah. It was a really good trailer. I'm gonna force myself to to slog through psychonauts one, even though we've got I I, I I want here. you to Some give me stuff. your commentary while you play it. Honestly. <laughs> I should. That's my, add it to the list of things I should stream. You should stream. Oh my god, I would watch your, your entire stream. <laughs> All right. Well, next up, we're gonna skip the Destiny Two talk because they they didn't announce. Uh, Sam's not here, relevant. so we don't. Need to. <laughs> they showed some cool new gameplay stuff, but it's not. Yeah, it's coming to Game Pass, which is I think the most notable thing. Uh, the you'll thing be able to Big play Destiny all DLC are... via Game Pass. So wait, the thing sorry. Big Destiny wait, heads wait, are into. Sorry. Wait, did you just say Destiny heads? Like that's a thing. Yeah, whatever. The thing Big Destiny heads are into is Guardians. you can throw. I mean, like we know Sam. Guardians. You can throw uh, platforms like the the crystal making the crystal platforms thing that they showed is like, I I know some Destiny people who are like, this changes everything. Oh my god! So it was a big deal to some people, but we can move on. Uh, Stalker two. All right, so we got two hours and sixty minutes on the on the clock. Yeah, let's double yeah. that. Oh God! <laughs> uh, Stalker Two was From announced. Trailer 10... that showed nothing. Stalker Two was announced ten years ago. Yeah, it was. Oh. <laughs> the first Stalker is still one of the best open world games of all time. By the way, it's really and excellent. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, this was basically just a greatest, a rendered greatest hits trailer of the cool shit from the first Stalker. So we don't know anything about it. They put out a fact. And they said, sure, there are choices you can make that impact the story. So the reason that I would caution everyone to be skeptical about Stalker is it was announced 10 years ago. And in the time since has always, it's always been a question as to how in development it really is. Mm -hmm. And I don't, there's no reason to believe that it's more in development now than it was 10 years ago, aside from the fact that apparently Microsoft was sold on it being a real thing. So yeah. Uh, who knows uh but stalker is fucking awesome and you should read roadside picnic i guess so you're saying it's kind of like beyond good and evil too but even less like gsc game world isn't doesn't even have the resources that ubisoft has so like okay I believe that Beyond Good and Evil 2 has been in development forever and actually worked on whether it'll ever come out who knows. Stalker is like it's like if one of us at this point it's like if one of us said, "Hey, we're making Stalker 2 and I happen to own <laughs> the the logo for GSC Game Worlds and I swear it's being worked on, but I don't have any proof." <laughs> now here's my Kickstarter. Yeah, ki- kind of, yeah. So, we'll see. We need a Kickstarter for Cargo, a quest for Gravity 2, if we're going for Russian games. See, Ice Pick Loge is a very access, like very accessible as in you can 
you could get them. We could probably get them on this show because there, <laughs> there's like four people at that studio. Yeah, they make rad shit. Anyway, Anyways. all right. Well, speaking of rad shit, hell yeah, Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. I like <laughs> stood up out of my chair. I was like screaming in my house. I'm trying to find the messages you sent to yeah. our chat because you were yeah. like, <laughs> I think you said. I'm literally shitting my pants right now. <laughs> yeah, probably. I was, I, I. It was, it was so much fun to be in that chat with you. Honestly, it was, it was like the Vin, that Vince McMahon, fuck that guy. But it was like that Vince McMahon <laughs> gif in real time. Cause I was like, it was like, this looks like a, this looks like a, like 40 K. And then I noticed the Eagle icon on the gun. And I was like, this is 40 K. And then they said inquisitor and then and I you're like, back a little further and then it flashed the fat shark logo. And I did the like fallback backwards in my chair thing. <laughs> Cause at it that point I knew what it was already. You, there, yeah. There was something in our chat where you're like, they said inquisitor and it was so yeah. good. I was so uh, happy. Um, yeah. Vermintide is one of the coolest cooperative multiplayer games ever made. It's fucking awesome. It, it is like, every time I think like I should play destiny, I'm like, no, I should play Vermintide. Um, not that it's like destiny, but it's just a really amazing, um, left for dead. Like that includes like the best progression that that genre has ever seen. And a cast of really, really awesome characters that are, are like lovable and, and fun. Excuse me. So for them to just like call this game dark tide and directly make it clear that they are mapping the Vermintide experience to 40 K is so cool. I cannot wait. It's, it's going to be presumably awesome. Like it's yeah. Vermintide is one of the worst communities in gaming. Cause they'll do things like they'll change like the parry time on an, on attacks and then people will steam review bomb it and be like, this game sucks. Now fat shark doesn't know how games work. They ruined it when it's like, shut the fuck up <laughs> uh, people with like 4,000 hours played will change the review to a thumbs down and say like until they make this sword do four more damage again this game is the worst game ever made don't be fooled if you see shit like that that game rips and dark tide is very exciting i, I just hope right. someone i hope someone says space marine they won't because you're not going to play a space marines that's part of why it's so exciting right but they, like, I, they... I, I hope a, i hope a space marine shows up at some point and then some space orc goes space marine and then i'm like fuck yeah that's, that's all i want <laughs> unfortunately uh, i don't think right. this is going to be the game for you damn it <laughs> well can i recommend in that case a tetris effect connected which is just tetris effect but with multiplayer dlc yeah. the ultimate space marine game yeah space whales but we're I... all space marines <laughs> <laughs> um i could not be less excited i love tetris effect but i think collaborative tetris is fucking awful because you don't have control over the other players so like if one person fucks something up and it like breaks the whole board then everybody gets upset and then it's that's just why like, it's well, great no it's, that i don't know how i feel like that would that gels with tetris effect exactly. because like for me at the t with tetris effect the 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 best part of it was just getting so in the zone and yeah. getting so like you're listening to the music you're playing the tetris uh, I was playing with VR, so I had like zero distractions and it was just like this like very, you know, focused experience. And I don't know, like if, if you could make that work multiplayer, that'd be really cool. But I just don't know. It's, speaking, it's really meditative. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that, when I played Tetris Effect, the year it came out for game of the year. So we could talk about it because I knew Erica wanted to talk about it. And I played it on PS4 on a flat screen and was like yeah, this is cool. Tetris is good. I would rather play like normal Tetris though, where I can focus more on like the game itself. And then it came out on Oculus quest. And last week I played, I still haven't got back to it. I will. I played the first level on Oculus Oculus quest and I had to take it off. Cause I started crying at the end of it. Cause it's, <laughs> it's so like, like emotional. Emotional. It's good. <laughs> when you're like, when you're, when it's actually all around you, it's like, Oh my God. It's <laughs> this... like, it's a real, it's a, it's a mood. It's that, yeah. <laughs> that game uh, when you're doing it in yeah. VR and, but, the thing yeah. Tetris effect connected does ruin all of that. And everyone here is totally right. But what it means is I can sit with my friends and we can all play and we can collaborate and we can be like, look at this. We're about to get like four Tetrises in a row. This is so cool. And then I can be like, Hmm, where should I put this long piece guys? 
I don't know where to put it. God. Hmm. I don't know what. Oh, oh, whoops. I put it vertical on the top of the tower and now we lost. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm already angry. mad at you. <laughs> yes. So it sounds like I, I didn't see this part of it, but I, it sounds like they're trying to thread the needle between uh, having that multiplayer Tetris experience while still having that visualizer effect going on and making it so it's, it's more like a cooperative experience, of competitive. Yeah. Yeah. Which is but why there, there it's is so competitive bad. in it too, though. Oh, okay. There, it, it is because it didn't come with multiplayer at all. Like there were like yeah. leaderboard things, but now it's just there is collaborative and competitive multiplayer in this. I want to ruin a board so bad. I want but everyone. What to if you have could the... get? history's greatest monster yeah i want to have the emotional <laughs> high of like completing that first level together with the music going and then just and just totally destroy ruin it, ruin it. We're all i wouldn't do that to anyone here I, I i would do it to people that i already have a loving but antagonistic occasionally friendship with so, so that's not with us wow <laughs> <laughs> I have totally misunderstood everything about our friendship. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't play. With maybe you Pat then. should be the one you trade off for me then. <laughs> I don't think be, you uh... want me. <laughs> Super GG would have a very different tone. Yeah, it's, it's suddenly Everyone would be upset the, by the end. <laughs> the length of Super GG suddenly tripled. <laughs> and now it's only sure. about Total War. <laughs> there would be a lot of talk about total war and flight simulator <laughs> um let's see next we got from the steam world team for probably games such as steam world dig steam world quest now comes the gunk this is yeah. probably the one that stood out most to me personally um it's a great name it looks it looks really fun and i and it, it the trailer looks good and and then it, it but then it said from like the from the steamroll devs and i'm like okay i i feel like i can trust them yeah to yeah. make a good game yes. so because um like I, I i've liked steamroll quest but like i especially loved the steamroll dig games yes. so oh yeah I'm, dig, dig 2 is amazing dig yep. 2 is so good um yeah, so I I'm excited about this, and uh, hopefully it'll be good. Yeah, I'm only upset that we didn't decide to call this podcast the Gunk because <laughs> I guess I just never thought that name would be available, and apparently it we, is. We we could have a we could have a lawsuit on our hands if we had done <laughs> things differently. We could be making millions of dollars. Also, the Gunk is a really good name. It is, and is, is that too? They never. All the previous SteamWorld games were all two D, right? Like yes this, this is the first uh, 3d game from them that i can think of I think heist is so. 2d heist is 2d as well heist yeah. is 2d yeah so um yeah. and quest is definitely 2d and so is di uh, are, the, are the digs so yeah yeah that's cool cool like yeah see what they no, can it, it also place. had like mario sunshine vibes mm -hmm. which yeah yeah i'm out <laughs> so <laughs> mario sunshine Shine. but good would be great it's Shine. a cool concept no, mario sunshine's a good game but uh <laughs> I, there's lots we'll of video of this later to, this year. <laughs> for to, yeah, hopefully we will. Uh, I'm I'm excited to well, rediscover the the joys of Mario Sunshine. Now imagine right. the gunk, but it's just Mario with like his his water backpack in there going wahoo. I thought you were gonna say <laughs> imagine the gunk, but there's two worlds and a a a a, a, a traumatized woman at the center of it, <laughs> like in the medium. So uh that looks medium that's cool actually had like one of the only like oh this is like a next gen like mm -hmm. thing like mm -hmm. and well you know it's on pc so like obviously there's ways they can do this but the one of the big selling points is they've got two worlds that are running simultaneously that are like i don't know the uh like demon world or whatever and like the regular human world and things happen in both it but they didn't really detail how it works they just kind of showed like oh she's doing one thing in one world and she's doing the same thing in another world but like it looks different yeah hopefully it's yeah that seems like yeah. it could be really cool has yeah, some, some silent hill vibes yeah. like it that, that game yes yeah. i'm anticipating that game for sure yeah hopefully it's kind of a blend uh, between like that bit in dishonored 2 and that bit in titanfall 2 yeah 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 for sure uh it's up for pre-order on steam it's only 50 dollars on steam um which is great because so, that's where i will play it <laughs> yeah <laughs> i guess if it's on game pass i'll probably play it on that but it will it easy. will be on game pass but it probably on uh 
PC Game Pass, probably. I assume. Hopefully. I don't know. Uh, almost done. They got only the hottest of bangers left. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Fantasy Fantasy Star Online Two New Genesis New Genesis Neon, just, Neon Genesis Evangelion. I don't, <laughs> I don't have a lot of opinions on this because I don't play Fantasy Star Online Two, but you should really look up the video of them explaining what this thing is because one, it's cool that they did that because it actually outlines very clearly what this thing. This thing is weird. <laughs> it is such a wild ass video that was refreshing okay. and funny well i believe if you tune in next week to our week show after. you can hear week after a week after okay in two weeks we can hear uh jeff davis talk all about illuminate history. us jeff has a long history with uh the history of fantasy star um, okay so they have some thoughts that they wanted to share all right and not quite last, but certainly the best. Yes. X gonna give it to you. Yes. And oh Crossfire X yes. with a, a slow cover of X gonna give it to you. Yes. I, I forget who it was in our chat who was like, "Is this like a like a slow remix Sam. of X gonna give it to you?" And Sam was right. They, and it was. They've been using it for a while. This isn't like the first time they've rolled it out. Either. I never. Th- I used to think like it wasn't actually that, even though it was evoking that I didn't mm-hmm. realize that it truly was just that. And it's so funny. It's like the perfect use it, of the slow. It's, solemn it's cover. Plans. Prior to this, it, my favorite was the use of the slow cover of in the end by Lincoln park in the magic, the gathering oh. trailer <laughs> that came out a couple of year, a year and a half ago. You made that up. That's not no, real. It's real. Oh it, is, it is amazing. <laughs> I feel bad that I spoiled it for people because it's better if you don't know what it is coming in because it, it's like, it slowly comes in and there's like this slow motion epic stuff going on. And then it goes, it starts with one. And you're like, no, 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 no. This isn't what this is going to be. And then it is that. And it's great. And but, it's some hand comes down and dramatically taps some mana. <laughs> no it's like a fantasy like in universe trailer not people playing magic the gathering uh that would be even better if it was people yes, it playing would. Magic the Gathering. um but yeah this crossfire x trailer i'm excited for this game it's the single player this part is, the multiplayer is whatever but two old ass games to finish off with well let me tell you alex there's one more thing oh shit fable baby yeah they're making a fable game uh yeah, it, it, it's called fable it's uh, they didn't say fable 4 there was someone who actually leaked basically the entire lineup had fable mmo on their list yeah and whatever. that was um not clarified it, it, but they didn't say what it is so. i bet for sure it'll have social areas where you see other players running around i, I would well, only yes. put money on that because it's fable by, it's made by playground well, and Fable yep. Two already had the thing where you could see like orbs of light from people playing yeah. in the world. I think so it, Fable have, One even had it. Maybe, maybe. Um, but but it'll 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 totally have like you're in town and there's a person that runs by and it's someone on your friends list or whatever. Like it'll do that. It's not going to be an MMO in the sense that like World of Warcraft is an MMO, though. I it highly doubt what that. It is. Then that's I'm not very excited for that. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. Because I, I feel like MMOs are kind of a dangerous place to tread right now. Anyway, it seems like yeah, a pretty yeah. mature market, and uh, yeah. the couple that are successful are the ones that have sewn it up. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But it looks—I mean, Fable's cool. So they—they they showed know. nothing in that trailer, but it's cool I, I, that it exists. I bet it's like, there is no no game yet. I bet they don't even. It's probably on a whiteboard. Like, <laughs> I, I don't. I even, mean, I bet there's not yeah. even much there. So, they've they've been building up that team is basically what's yeah, happening for sure. So pre-production. If it's, if it's playground games, are you going to be driving some car through uh, Albion <laughs> or whatever? Well, they they made a second team, uh, but yeah, that but would be pretty sweet. <laughs> hell yeah i'd do it yeah it's hard uh, to know cars like, it is a it is a separate team and it's a lot of new people so it's hard to know like what the quality of the the talent there is but i mean playground has yeah. some pretty good pedigree and fable's cool and i think peter molyneux being as far away from that game as possible is probably the best thing for it <laughs> um, so yeah probably 
What about poor Milo? Free Milo. <laughs> uh, and bring Milo to Game Pass. Oh. Uh, yeah, so all the games that they showed are coming to Game Pass. And, and so I think one of the interesting takeaways from this was how many games didn't say they were coming to Xbox One because they have said like for the first few years that all Microsoft first party games will be coming to both consoles available on Xbox one and series X, but numerous games did not show Xbox one branding in their trailers while others did. Uh, so I wonder if that means like those games are like three years out or, you know, I, th- I think that all that that is, is they don't know if it's, if they're going to be yeah. on Xbox one or not. I don't think it's some insidious, like, Oh, they said it's only going to be for two years after Xbox One X, and there's no games coming out for two years. So of course, I think it's more just like they're just not sure what Halo oh, is yeah. close enough that they can say for sure what that where that game is at. But I just think they don't know. I mean, I don't. Forza might be next year. Maybe it'll be in 2022 and outside the window. Like you just yeah. I also don't think that they're going to sacrifice the quality of the games to force them to run on Xbox one X. So I think if that means sitting on it a bit until that window has closed, that that's probably more likely than them trying to like put out a flawed version of it on the console. Then it's just, why did they make that promise? Totally. Absolutely. <laughs> is, yeah. You know, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, uh, and they're supposed to have another event next month. Supposedly that'll be the Lockhart reveal and where we'll get pricing and probably some like launch lineup, like firmed up launch lineup details, dates, all that kind of stuff. Was Lockhart supposed to be the digital only box that they're selling? It's supposed to be like the mid tier or like the lower end, like, yeah, not as powerful. Basically like the Xbox One S to the One X, basically. If we have a Xbox Series X, this would be the Xbox Series S. Which I assume gotcha. is the con- naming convention they'll use. The X- so they discontinued the Xbox One X and the Xbox One S digital, but the One S is still in production. So it's possible there will be like a three tiered system. Like there'll be the One S, the, the Series S, and the One X. And you got SSX. Oh my God. Yes. Amped and you four. strap to your feet and you skate, you, uh, you, <laughs> you ski two down. Games. Amp uh, four Mount SSX. Rainier. Those are your two skis that form mm. how you'll go down the mountain of the Xbox Series X. This mountain of games available with yeah. Xbox Game Pass. That's, yeah, totally. That's pretty, that's pretty tricky. Yes. Yes. Very good. Yeah, you stuck the landing there. To, Great job. <laughs> tricky to uh, write a joke that's right on topic. It's true. Uh, so I, and I assume what they'll do is what it'll be is the Xbox Series X is the like you run the games locally and they look sick as fuck at 4K and it's great. The Xbox Series S will be the you can play these games on this and it's it, they they still are they run okay and they run at 1080p instead of 4K and then the Xbox One S will be the X cloud's cool system, you know, like that seems mm-hmm. like the way it'll go, yeah. which is could be smart. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, that's going to do it for the Xbox talk, unless anyone's got any other thoughts. One thing yeah. I'll say is that the um, messaging near the end of the stream, where it was basically like, Hey, um, you, you, if you buy a series X, there'll be a hundred games available for it on game pass at launch, which is, which I thought was like, okay, this is, this is a solid marketing sales for, for it. So yeah, I was like, I, that's good, good marketing. Yeah. I think that comes back to what we were saying near the start that like Microsoft is approaching the whole thing differently than Sony. Where yeah. yeah they, oh, totally. really, they totally care about the service. And I, yeah. I think, and, go ahead. Oh, uh, just that I, you know, I, I'm a lot closer to buying and, uh, uh, a series X as somebody that's never bought an Xbox system. Um, sure. in part because I'm like game pass is so good <laughs> that I'm like, yeah. I, that having a dedicated, uh, game pass box, uh, on my, um, like in my living room sounds pretty dang good. 
I just I think all three of them are really taking a completely different tact and it's really yeah. interesting. Like Microsoft is leaning heavily into the services based side of things, which makes sense given uh, the state of their business from what I've seen from my vantage point. Uh, you know, Sony seems to be hedging their bets because they've they've got the PlayStation Now stuff, they got PlayStation Plus, but like you said, they're they're leaning heavily into marketing their exclusives uh, and, and still talking about, you know physical product being available and then nintendo with their conservatism really is just you know self-constraining and holding themselves back when it comes to the services side of things uh whether it's because of like a protectionism <laughs> with uh, their sort of family friendly looking nature or kind of being almost like luddites <laughs> And afraid of of new technology, so I mean it, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out, and that's part of what's fascinating is just it feels like a big question mark right now. Yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see. We're waiting on both the Microsoft and Sony to blink and actually reveal what's up with the console because right they've shown games we don't really know any like grander details outside of like game pass is microsoft is still pushing that but that's nothing new other than them committing like okay all these games are on game we're gonna be on game pass i think we have a pretty Chris. clear picture of like what the ps5 is is from an like architectural standpoint yeah, and yes like, hardware wise and i think business wise it's going to be the same thing as the ps4 you're going to buy 60 or probably 70 dollar box games that you that or or digitally that are discrete experiences that that they support the same way they've been supporting games for PS4 and I think it'll work really well for them. Um, I, I think that that has shown to be they have an incredibly talented stable of first party studios that make extremely high quality from a technical perspective at least games um, that usually have really tight gameplay. Uh, I think like my part of why I was warmer on the Xbox event than the Sony event is I'm not that excited for Horizon Two which is really weird because Horizon is one of my favorite games of the, this generation. But I look at it and I'm like, yeah, I guess we're going to do that again for 40 hours. And I look at Miles Morales and I'm like, yeah, Spider-Man was good. I guess we're going to swing around the same map with a better character for 20 hours. And like, I know God of War is coming and I'm excited to see the next story, but it's like, I feel like there's nothing for me to I, there's no mystery as to what the next five years look like for sony to me and i think that's like i'm kind of like i've done all this stuff over the last 10 years and i'd like to do something new yeah now. i think <laughs> that's both a draw and a setback yeah, for sure. i know for a lot of people that's like the idea of like okay i liked all these games this is more of the same exciting like that's what they want versus whereas i i totally understand your perspective as well so it's yeah, yeah. it's kind of like you know like the most interesting thing sony showed was bug snacks and that's not a sony <laughs> game <laughs> they're, they're, yeah they're, they're being very iterative and it's 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 hedging yeah. their bets because they want to maintain that market position they have and, but but there's a danger in that and that's why xbox could steal their lunch I think I don't even think it's going to be a question of I think you're you're right but also it's not necessarily even going to be a question of like lunch stealing it's more just like I think it's going to work really well for them I think that Horizon 2 will probably I could, I bet I could predict within a 3 mark point margin of error the metacritic scores of the next 5 years of Sony exclusives Well it's <laughs> yeah, also God. It's also one of those things where we've talked about this a little bit on the on the cast before but they're like I'm going to buy a PlayStation five. Like it's oh, not, too, it's, yeah. it's not, it's an, and, and you are too. And it's just like, it's kind of a foregone conclusion that, Oh, I want these ex, uh, uh, exclusives. So I'm going to buy it. But at the same time, there's like not much excitement there to and, be buying. I'm not like, Oh yeah, I'm so excited to buy the PlayStation totally. five. It's just more of like, it. it's more of like, well, I'm gonna, which I mean, still gets them the sale, but it's a, at the same time, yeah. like, and I'm gonna buy yeah. and play horizon too. And I'm probably gonna really enjoy it when I play it, but there's not that like, what's it going to be? I mean, I know what that game is going to be right now. And yes, I'd like to play it, but it's also not like that, like, like death loop, for example, is a like, man, I got to see what that is. I got to get a, get in there and feel, and feel what that game is. And that's not the way I feel about Sony's first party games, you know? Um, so yeah like i loved spider-man so i'm like oh i need to play miles morales but like yeah. at the same time i'm like 
Oh, I got a, I think, but I got to buy a new box for that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well, Nintendo. Yes. Did yeah. Another direct. <laughs> Speaking of a, the a mini, a mini direct. Uh, a partner a micro showcase. Direct. <laughs> a mini. It was, it was eight minutes in the states. It was longer in Japan, and mm. uh, where they showed two more games mm. that are coming out in the U.S. They just didn't show them in the what? American direct. Yeah. Huh. Weird. And apparently they look. I can't remember what they're called. Apparently they were like some of the most interesting things in that video. Because that video um, is largely not interesting, except for the two games that are on our list to talk about. Yeah, uh, the Shin Megami Tensei Five is mm-hmm. coming finally mm-hmm. after being announced with at the Switch like announcement, yeah. like announced at the same time. <laughs> yes, that tracks with the history of Shin Megami Tensei. The yeah, uh, Shin Megami Tensei games. <laughs> yeah, so Shin Megami Tensei Five coming next year, twenty twenty one as well as Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD coming in 2021 as well. It was kind of funny following the stream on like Twitter because there are a lot of people who are like, I don't understand, except all the Shin Megami Tensei fans who are just like, ah! yes. <laughs> no- Nocturne is, uh, has, I don't think it's going to have aged particularly well from a content perspective because I was reminded that there's some stuff in there that's like, I don't know if we want to revisit that, but uh, the game's really good. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, yeah, look for that next year. Also in the news, Ghost of Tsushima is selling the bonkers in Japan. It's just flying off the shelves. Sony's like, uh, yeah, stock, there's not a lot of it. <laughs> uh, still- which not surprising which i want to really write a review awesome. it, it's cool i want to write a review for it still and like in my head where i'm at right now is like i like alex's hardline stance against half stars so given that mm-hmm. this is the first time where i'm like i don't know if i can just round it straight up to a four but a three seems low so <laughs> it's a it's a good game it's interesting that it's selling so well yeah i love that the uh, japanese i mean is super like into it the uh the, there's not a ton of games like there's like uh the, the 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 what are the nobunaga's ambition there's like dynasty warriors type games that are set in japan but shenmue. like i feel like there aren't a ton to sure shenmue have you seen any sailors god <laughs> uh but there aren't there aren't a ton of games that are set in Japan or like with samurai, which is kind of weird. There are there are certainly games that are set there, but historical Japan. It's like a yeah, sure. It, it's a yeah. big it's a big uh, release from Sony, and so I'm not surprised that it's selling well. I'm surprised that like the localization is so well received. But without you know, that's not dis- a, a dismissing, super hard thing to do. Without dismissing anyone's. Um, uh criticisms of that game and elements of it that may or may not be appropriative i don't personally really have an opinion i've just been trying to like listen to other people's more than anything but i think it's interesting that the what i have read from a lot of japanese press is the idea of like hey it's really cool that a popular western developer wants to make a game about our history and culture which Mm -hmm. is again i don't really have an opinion on like the like correctness of that but i think it's really interesting that that is the tone that's 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 sort of building up around that game well so many japanese devs and devs all over the world make games about american culture yeah you know you've got sweary deadly premonition or you know any resident evil from capcom and stuff like that yeah tons and tons and tons of just uh, tons bayonetta (laughs) yeah And, and to see a game that at least you know, you're solid. it may get it to get some things wrong, like, oh, the haiku wasn't invented then or, uh, you know, katanas weren't invented then. But yeah, yeah, that, you know, that goes to the trouble, like they went through the trouble of making sure the localization was really good. And it's, you you know, you're a samurai and you do cool shit. Like, the only weird part, part of that game. game is the ways in which it is like, oh, thank you, Lord Samurai. I have collected this wood for you. I praise you. I praise you. Is like, okay. Actually, samurai were not good. <laughs> like they fucked over the working class, just like every ruling class has in history. 
But aside from that kind of fantasy element, which is still like admittedly entertaining to play with in a game, if you turn off that critical part of your brain, um, it it's a lot of that stuff is like liberties taken. I think consciously. I don't think that they like mm-hmm. didn't know haikus were invented yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I I wonder what the uh, localization on those haikus is like because some people have said that the English stuff is not good at all. So I wonder if they're not very good for sure. Yeah. So I wonder if the Japanese, the localization of the haikus is better. Could be. Don't know. uh, Push square to reflect on uncle. Uh, (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Next, next news story. Rocket Uh, league. There was one push square to reflect on lovers. (laughs) That one is very good. (laughs) Anyway. Wow. Uh, Rocket League is going free to play. Speaking of lovers, uh, no longer available for people on Steam to get. I wonder if that'll come back, or I, I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, it's tough well, to say. Basically, the way they phrased it is that it's. I think it's going to Epic Game Store, uh, but they're not taking it off of Steam. So if you have it on Steam, mm-hmm. you can still access it. But if you're going in fresh, you're not going to get it on Steam. Yeah. Okay. That's. Hmm. It's interesting because I want to say at first when they got acquired by epic they were like no 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 it'll be it's fine it'll be on steam it's fine and then it became like we're evaluating the future availability of this game on other platforms and now it's like nope epic exclusive baby (laughs) which is what we all knew was going to happen from the beginning uh yeah but whatever uh rocket league it's good yeah, play it. Play it. Yeah. It, yeah, it's a good it's game. A great, yeah, it's a great game. It, it already has all those free-to-play kind of hooks in it already. Yeah. Right, so like, like I'm the... not terribly... I mean, even before the acquisition, like, the, if this had happened, I'd be kind of like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. So. Yeah, and it's it doesn't feel bad because I've probably played... I'm not a huge Rocket League player, but I've probably played a couple dozen hours of it at least. And so I feel like I got the, like, $20 or whatever I spent on it out mm-hmm. of it. Oh, so. totally. I'm you afraid know, to look like, at the hour count on mine. I, uh, <laughs> I, I dumped way right. too much time into it. Uh, our next news story is Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two is actively being developed. You'd hope so at this point. <laughs> uh, like they wrapped up on Final Fantasy, or they, you know, Final Fantasy Remake, Final Fantasy VII Remake came out this year, but we have to. We're gonna have to replay the first Final Fantasy VII remake by the time the second one comes out to remember all of the stuff that happened. Well, it's supposed to be smaller, so like maybe yeah. it won't be that long. But I watch a cutscene couple. We'll listen to our spoiler cast uh, to yeah, remember. It was a good. That was a good podcast. Uh, yeah, the rest of them though. find that in our podcast. All garbage. Yeah. They were of mixed quality for sure. Yeah. <laughs> some people have um, the wrong opinion of that game in my opinion um i'm just i'm surprised this is news because i thought it was in active development as soon as the first one hey, yeah, that's i actually like yeah. i actually like burst out laughing in that like spit on my monitor screen way when i saw the tweet because i was like what do you mean it's in active development now <laughs> but there was some stuff like we're still trying to figure out what it is like as the game came out like as the you know part one came out there was some like oh we got you know we're still evaluating like how long these things are going to be and like we're gonna condense them to make them shorter and stuff but now like okay it's like it's been in pre-production obviously like they've been figuring stuff out they've already got a ton of assets and mechanics and stuff like that so it's building out yeah yeah. the areas and it is funny acting and story stuff figured out my thoughts on the heels of part one were, I hope it's not small because it really should be big and it would be cool if it were a big epic thing. And now I'm just like, just get it out. I don't give a shit. Make it all two of, hours long. All, just all put the that, thing out. All of that. That's what she said. Yeah. And the part there that comes right after like Midgar isn't necessarily like it's, you get the open world, but there's nothing yeah. like that we'll crazy there. There's like the big snake thing, but like, that's not, too hard to do i don't think get a chocobo i I really hope that game comes out within two years though because if it's another two four years like what (laughs) when how how is that series i I think it's got to be like two years 
at most. I would hope. I would hope a year. Like I think that would be I, ideal. Yeah, same. I mean, that would be ideal, but will you it would happen? Hope, I think it'll happen. <laughs> you would hope they would be able to build off the foundation of what they made with seven and exactly. Accelerated, right. but given their history, scrapping all yeah. assets. I feel like we've yeah. been saying that for like the seven years at least that it's been since they announced. Hey, remember Final <laughs> Fantasy versus thirteen? I don't want to talk about it. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, hey, that game came out. It did. Uh, next up, Junji Ito, horror manga artist, and Hideo Kojima are working on a game together, or in talks, or are working. I don't know. I think it's that they're they're Hideo the, the talking. has maybe invited him to come in and do a thing, maybe. But he, he did scan like... his face into Death Stranding. It's true. I, fuck, I want this so bad. I really I, do. Man. I have I have three <laughs> thoughts on it. One, that sounds rad as hell as a huge Junji Ito fan and you know fairly big Kojima fan these days. Sure. Two, I'm not confident this will ever actually happen. Three, I don't know if I want it because that is going to be a uh, upsetting, terrifying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like I'm, I'm interested <laughs> in it in theory, but I am not. I don't think I would have it in me to play it. To be honest, so this comes. Th- this news comes from a Comic Con talk with Junji Ito, where he says Kojima is working on a horror game and he has been invited to work on it. Uh, Junji Ito has been invited to work on it. Uh, but he is not like committed or, and there are no like official plans, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would uh, would love to see it. Like, um, I I know like in death stranding, the like getting grabbed by the shadowy kind of stuff, like sure. Like after a while it was kind of not scary, but the first time you encounter it, like the imagery and like just how visceral it is and just how scary the concept is like, that was actually pretty freaky. And like PT was really effective and, I would love to see what those two could just do together because I imagine it would be nuts. The mm-hmm. only thing I worry about is both of them occasionally are willing to go in certain directions with body horror that I personally find um, not just upsetting on a, ooh, that's creepy, but also on a, I don't think you should do that. <laughs> level (laughs) so with their powers combined there is a piece of part of me that's like i don't know if i want to see the things you would do (laughs) in that area fair Uh, enough our powers combined you are grossed the fuck out and not just grossed out on a ooh, that's a that's a head that turned into a spiral but grossed out on a uh this is probably there's a there's a bomb level. in that lady's vagina yeah that's kind of the stuff i'm oh, talking about okay so uh, what we need uh, is a candle with three wicks and one no. wick is junji ito one wick is hideo kojima and the third wick is the creator and writer of made in abyss <laughs> oh god I'm, I'm not sure no. i'm down with that incantation no, no. <laughs> uh, yankee candle i'm sending this back <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. All right. Speaking of sending things back, <laughs> another fuck you back at Ubisoft. Why are we doing this? What what is it this time? Uh, there's lots of stuff. But I, mean, I just besides put it in just there. general. Like, I just saw it yeah. and I was like, like I didn't know the, any context, and I was like, yeah, that's true. Uh, there, <laughs> there, there have been more. I mean, there's enough context. It gets, but it gets worse and worse. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. They've been they've continued to be terrible. I don't think we even really need to talk about it. It's just no, kind of a fuck. But I think we need a standing fuck you to Ubisoft for the foreseeable future in the ways yeah. in which we have had fuck yous that have come up every week in the past. Uh, oh, they have at least uh, been excising the people who have been, uh, but that's so we, the bare minimum. So we don't have to get into it. But part of the problem this week is that they have not been excising people uh, as okay. well. <laughs> they have and they yeah. haven't been. Okay. <laughs> Well, last, some really out of left field news. <laughs> Absolutely earth shattering, shocking the dogs and cats living together. G4 is coming back in 2021. I mostly put it on the end of this list because this is kind of dumb, but <laughs> it's baby. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this kind of led to a lot of people going back and watching old G4 and being like, oh, this was kind of terrible. Oh, awful. Yeah, <laughs> awful, I, awful. I, I have a lot of affection for it because I watched 
really a lot of G4 back um, early Same. to mid 2000s. Like I, I have like, like the early, the early to mid 2000s in gaming. I feel like I know the games so well, even if I didn't play a lot of them because I just watched so much G4. Um, yeah. And I still have a lot of affection, especially for like X play and stuff. But some of the, some of the old G4 was like, mm, not they're, like, they're great. There was like, a I mean, lot that yeah. was like sexist jokes and yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. all yeah. sorts of tasteless let, are, let, let but me also preface, that soft spot in my heart for this after with, school programming. Let me preface this with this. This is not an excuse, but it's very much a product of its time. Well, especially uh, like with and, gaming culture, yeah. for sure. Well, exactly. And if you if we go back to EGMs and, and other gaming mags and yeah. stuff like that, it it is filled with that same kind of sensibility. And I think it's a reflection of the market they were trying to adhere to which was young men and you know they didn't consider that maybe women and girls would like video games too <laughs> and it's, so oh yeah i yeah, think totally. part of to not to disagree but at the same time i think part of like one of the things that 2020 is really bringing to the forefront for a lot of people i think is that's true but also it still sucked right <laughs> right like said, oh, it doesn't, okay <laughs> it doesn't make it okay and it should yeah, yeah. inform choices moving forward to make right. things better and i don't right. think you're trying to excuse yeah. them either but i think yeah. sometimes people who are actually who are operating in bad faith will sometimes say well product of its time and it's like well okay right. but we also need to underscore that with that doesn't mean that it's like now you should enjoy it <laughs> because it was a product of its time and it's okay to go back and say like, now I will say out loud that a show called the international sexy ladies show is, a, is problematic, but I'm still going to watch it and like it. Yeah. It was a product of its time. It's like, no, fuck that. Yeah. So they really brand it like as time went on and the video game stuff became less profitable. They were just more and more like, dude bro entertainment like, we, we got weird dude bro entertainment and weird weird and run like reruns of like cops yeah cops just cops. what are they gonna yeah, air that, cops that, is that canceled. should have told us everything uh, well i mean is <laughs> yeah. cheaters still on like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cops cheaters it's just yeah yeah. And so it's unclear if this is like an actual TV channel or if it's like a YouTube thing or like a if website. It's coming, a Patreon. It's what are they? To, what is this? Was it Kibi Quibi? Maybe it's coming they, back. Then. Quibi. Uh, oh God. Verified that it's. <laughs> We're assuming that Quibi is still going to be around in 2021. Is a big. I am not. <laughs> It'll be all that's uh, left in 2021. Cockroaches, Twinkies, and Quibi. They have ref <laughs> they have confirmed that it is going to be web based and not an actual okay. yeah over the yeah that would be or, in, or like cable television uh, show an absurd notion of yeah. to um, have G four come back to TV and yeah yeah like, it'll like, be weird its target audience does not have cable anymore. and I don't know what the, it'll be interesting to see like what their play is because if it's all new people like what was really the point of calling it G four yeah and if it's yeah. the older staff. I mean, you have people like Adam Sussler, who I don't want to see on a show I, now. I'm pretty um, sure that he's moved on. I know that, um, like, Morgan Webb's moved on. So, like, they've all kind of moved and, on. Like, I saw a news article recently that was, like, Olivia Munn talking about how she's the happiest she's ever been in her life. I'm pretty sure she doesn't want to go back to trying to eat hot dogs off of a fishing pole. No. Like, <laughs> we, it, it, God. I, not, not to get more abstract into the societal stuff, but I, I, think, I think if G4 is used as a platform to prop up newer voices into the gaming community and more diverse voices. Totally. It, it could be a great resurgence. And I, and I hope that's what it turns into. Same for sure. Yeah. I think we do need to hold it to the standards of today and not just assume oh, yeah. it's going, it's oh, going to, sure. it's not assume it's going to be what it was 15 years ago. But I, one but, thing yeah. that would be really super, super nice. And I know that I don't know if this will happen is if they could post like old episodes of, X play and stuff on online yeah, <laughs> because there's sure. some things that are, are on YouTube, but it's like, it's very sparse. And I'm just like, occasionally I get into that nostalgia where I'm just like, I just want to like, like sit around and watch like two hours of X play. And, yeah. Yeah. And I, th I think if they Trojan, if they use it as a Trojan horse to get like diverse voices in front of people who would normally. Yeah. Be like that'd be really cool. Shitty. Then, then yes, that would, that would be, that would be pretty good. Or so. they do 
the video game Vixens show oh God. Oh God. second round. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, if it's the, if that's the case, just throw the whole man away. <laughs> like, just let's just just bury it in the dirt. Dump the body yeah. in the river and be done with yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, we'll see in six to 20, six to 18 months. We'll see G4. Yeah. Uh, best of luck to the people involved. Hopefully they make something cool and interesting. Uh, with that, we're going to finally wrap this thing up just over three hours today. I think we did all right. Well, probably less than three hours if we cut off the beginning. I don't know. Uh, good job, everybody. Nice work on episode 131. Is that where we're at? I'm out of it. 131 huh. of the Gaming Fix podcast on July 25th, 2020. I'm your host, Andre Cole, a.k.a. your partner's favorite Yankee candle. You can find me on Twitter at CoolSlaw, C-O-O-L-S-L-4-W. If you head over there, you can follow me and find out when I go live on Twitch over the next like month and a half or so. And start doing some stuff on YouTube. I don't know. Follow follow the podcast on Twitter at Fix Podcasts, and head over to podchaser.com slash gaming fix and leave us a review to help us improve so we can uh, give you the best show possible. The one feedback we will not take is to make a shorter show. No. We can't do it. <laughs> it's impossible. impossible at this point. Yeah. Cannot, cannot be done. We give ourselves that feedback all the time and we can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the thing that amazes me is with six people, we still only hit three hours. So uh, we hit it with four people. We hit it with three people. We hit it with six people. I don't know what's, we just can't do. We just managed to it, like fill the time. Yep. No matter who's on it. Well, we did talk about Yankee candles for like 20 minutes at the start of the podcast. I, I think when we have like <laughs> three people, we just get into more Jenny Nicholson style rants about just really obscure subjects. We, we, well, to be fair, going. this week you, you had a Yankee Candle subject matter expert with you. So <laughs> that's true. That is true. We basically just go until Andre can't keep his eyes open anymore. That's sort of the goal. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's an endurance test. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks for joining us, Joel. Where can people find you? No, this has been fantastic. So, uh, Myself and my co-hosts Alex and Getty are part of a podcast called Super GG Radio. You can find us at uh, twitter.com slash Super GG Radio. I think that's the URL. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Super GG Radio, where we all sort of pitch in and do various different streams. Uh, I'll just plug mine because I'm selfish. Uh, my wife and I have been going through Chrono Trigger on Tuesdays uh, because uh, my wife is very inexperienced in video games, uh, and I want to share my interests with her and i figured an rpg might be a good uh way to ease into some of it and uh we're going to start doing kingdom hearts on tonight uh oh yeah Ooh. hell uh, yeah Who's uh, playing okay, I, I, I need to watch this well uh she will be playing it and i will be helping where needed uh, <laughs> oh my god i i I'm gonna watch that first this. game is rough. The first game is rough. Yeah, uh, you know, yes, it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it is very rough. We, we've done a few hours, and she loves it because of the integration of Disney, right? And mm -hmm. uh, and uh, all those themes and worlds. And uh, I like it because of Final Fantasy, and I hate it because of how it plays. But uh, yeah. you know, we're gonna tough through it together and, and try to get through the whole series. Everything? You, gotta, you gotta play it all you gotta play it all yeah. <laughs> there's no side games you gotta play it all you got you gotta play Phone union game. cross you gotta play melody of memory dark road uh well i think we got the collections on playstation 3 i think those mm -hmm. come with some of the side stuff i'm not i'm not they, sure if we have ever they come with all the con so you have the ps3 versions not ps4 yeah, yeah ps3 oh. versions yeah so I, think I don't know the what PS4 those have four versions have more there's movies. There's know. a movie you have to watch. Oh my god! Oh, okay, so some, somebody here three. send me the compendium uh, of, of uh, actually the PS4 you. version is on sale for like twenty bucks, like the all in one version. So it's Wait, got every real? single game. Yeah, like that, one to that's, three. That's the one to play with. For like sure. all the side stuff is like twenty bucks right now on the summer sale. I think. Yep. yep. Okay, I might double dip on that. Then. And it has it everything except the mobile games. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then it pass doesn't on. have three though, does it? 
It, no, no, it, it does. Have... It's I believe it's the all in one. Let me double check. I don't right. uh, think so. But uh, the the don't worry. It doesn't have the mobile games, but it does have an hour long movie you can watch to understand the plot of the mobile games, which is actually integral to understanding what happens in Kingdom Hearts three. So <laughs> <laughs> good to know. Thank you for the forewarning. Uh, Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom rips Hearts. ass. It's so good. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts all in one package includes Kingdom Hearts oh, HD 1.5 plus 2.5 remix, Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 final chapter prologue and Kingdom Hearts three hmm, okay. for $3 yeah. right now. Oh, that's right not bad. Now. That sounds like you're getting four games. You're actually getting eight. Jesus think. Christ, Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> and, and like various movies. movies and cutscenes. Hashtag content. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> lots of it. Like but yeah, thanks so much for having me, guys. This was a lot of fun today. Uh, yes, it was yeah, great. It's great yeah, to have you. Be on. Uh, Pat, where can people find you? Find me at PJC Plays, and I'm trying to uh, have, a, have a half year's resolution to try to make more content for the podcast. Um, I unsuccessfully, just as I was starting to get my feet wet, wet with Mixer, they closed it. So uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to stream Facebook on Twitch gaming. or on YouTube. No. I will not be streaming on Facebook gaming. Um, <laughs> but either way, I'm going to do it through the the uh, the Fix um, channel when I do. So um, just keep an eye out for our stuff. And yeah. Okay. Allison, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at W-R-I-T-E-R-S-E-R-E-N-Y-T-Y. -E -E Great. And Erica. Uh, I'm also on Twitter at Erica, spelled A-I-R-E-H-C-U-H. Great. And finally, Alex, my boy, where can people find you? Hey, you can find me in the bathroom listening to Super GG Radio, which is an NPR <laughs> podcast. You can find them at superggradio.wordpress.com. You can email them at superggradio at gmail.com and listen to them on all of your favorite podcast apps. Also, it's like it's like our Alex told you that I didn't pick up the slack of plugging all our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I got you covered. Don't worry. Um, Thanks, buddy. <laughs> and also, um, I think I'm, I'm playing around with the idea of doing a coding fix podcast, be it series or a couple like mini things. We will see. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for joining us once again, everybody, listeners and uh, people on the call alike. I'll see most of you next week and I'll hear Joel in the near future. Good deal. Goodbye. Bye, Bye everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.